The following program is intended for mature audiences. This is Max Ma Ma Hedrum, and what you're about to witness is one of the most sinister-sounding intros to a trailer to one of the greatest epics ever. <gasps> Live from the Raw Radio X studios in downtown Detroit, this is the IT in the D show. Alive, it's alive, it's alive! What'd you do? Boy, I'm sure glad that's over with. Me too! Yeah, but you know, I learned something today. <laughs> what did you learn? But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. I have no idea what's going on. I f <laughs> Dig you IT geeks. This is Dre De Mateo from Sons of Anarchy. You are listening to IT in the D. So what happens when you tap the angry beaver in the bunghole? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Come on. Christ. <laughs> what the hell with this? I'm calling a break. We'll come back to the TV show. Just where do you guys think you are? The Library of Congress? Detroit? Beyond the Sun? Any of those, right? Hi, I'm Ernie Hudson, and you're listening to IT in the Deep. All you nerds out there. Nerds! 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 What is a nerd? What's up, everybody? This is Billy Zapka. Sweep the leg. Listening to IT in the D show. No mercy. Bob loves it in the camp. Yeah, You're in your underwear? I'm in my underwear. Here, let's hang out. No, I'm sorry, honey. I have a headache. I <laughs> definitely want to see Bob in his underwear. That's a fact. That's why I like it in the can. How much scotch did you drink that night, by the way? <laughs> a half a bottle. Okay, then shut the hell up. Hi, this is Martin Cove, uh, John Kreese from the Karate Kid movie. And you're listening to IT in the D. Yes, this is a bad idea. Hey guys, it's Time Off. Bruce Leroy from The Last Dragon. You're listening to the IT and D show. I may have to wipe the beat off. Hi, I'm Brittany Daniel from The Game, and you're listening to IT and the D show. Hey Jerry Slater. Hey Jerry Slater. You're really good. Hey Jerry Slater. The Turk Monster is in full effect here. Take him to Detroit. No! No, not Detroit! No! No, please! Everything was done! No! I used to hang out at the Mogumbo Bar. It was a rough place, a seediest dive on the wharf, populated with every reject and cutthroat from Bombay to Calcutta. It's worse than Detroit. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Then don't come! Shut up! This is Robert Hayes. Ted Stryker to my mother. When I'm not hanging out at the Magumbo Bar, I'm listening to the IT and the D show. It's worse than Detroit. I guess Captain so, Soundboard doesn't know how to run the soundboard. Take on the PPR. Uh, I don't know who brought that bell in, but Bob's got a new toy. <laughs> Is there such thing as a meat hangover? I love my Monday meat stick. Turn your microphone off. Just get out. <laughs> my job is to make sure this program is morally upright and cultural and wholesome. <laughs> Shut up, Mimsy. Hey, folks, this is WWE Hall of Famer Hacksaw Jim Duggan, and you're listening to the IT and the D Show. Tough guy. Ho! So, what would you little maniacs like to do first? The question isn't what are we going to do. The question is what aren't we going to do. Ludicrous speed! Go! This is done. And once again, we are live. Welcome to the IT and the D Show, episode 66. We're sitting here in the Raw Radio X studios in the Russell Industrial Center in beautiful Midtown, Detroit, Michigan. As always, the show is brought to you by Bob the Sales Guy, Dave the Geek, Jeff the Voice of Reason. And tonight we are uh, sponsored to you by Logicalis and Quantum. Find them online, Logicalis, us.logicalis.com, and Quantum Storage is at quantum.com. Find us online, IT and the D.com, Facebook slash IT and the D, Twitter, hashtag IT and the D, um, all that good stuff. And hey, just because I'm on the edge of living dangerously, let's go ahead and give out the phone number. Hey! It is 313-462-0107. Uh, yeah, I guess, you know, just taking care of a little business like we always do. So uh, this Thursday night, we have our live in-person casual networking social that will be taking place at the Stray Cat Lounge. That's out in Clinton Township at 18 in Garfield. 
phenomenal place uh, if you missed our event there earlier this year. It's called Robusto's People from Gross Point. It's yeah. a great place. Great, yeah, uh, I can't wait to go there. I love that place. Yeah, great little scotch cigar martini bar. Uh, great jazz, nice dark wood, nice humidor. Uh, and they've got a, and I know people hear cigar bar and they freak out. No, they have a killer ventilation system. You could be standing next to somebody smoking a cigar and you would never know. Uh, so yeah, uh, we do. We hope everybody makes it out. That should be a really good event. Uh, it's always fun to see people when we get together in person. Yeah, I actually sent a, uh, Bo is going to happy hour with a couple of work, uh, her coworkers. It's like, I don't want to go to Roger's roost. I go, go to, go to, um, go there. Right. Yeah. She went there and she's loved it. But I stink like cigars. I'm like, it's a cigar bar, you know. <laughs> and, and, Thanks for completely just disproving what I just said. About that's <laughs> I would. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, place are, is still are, great. Are you sure? Are you sure she wasn't smoking cigars? <laughs> I, I told her why didn't you? <laughs> when in Rome, right? Right. Yeah, exactly. No, so I mean, it's uh, yeah. And then last, uh, what was it? Wednesday night, uh, we were over mm-hmm. at the Detroit Regional Chamber. Uh, that was. An interesting it was better thing. than I thought. It was. Uh, doing our How Not to Suck at LinkedIn presentation. Uh, and in fact, we just got recruited to do that again tomorrow. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. What? Yeah, yeah tomorrow morning. Um, but so, no, I mean, it was. Apparently, uh, what we think is like bare bones at the, common wait, knowledge. Back at the chamber? No. Yeah. In no. OU incubator. The OU incubator. Uh. Um, apparently, what we think is common knowledge, people think it's amazing. No, it's like you're so uncovering uh, you know, gold from a stone or something. Exactly. Right. So, yeah. So, but it was. I mean, it was a good crowd. Uh, we had the over-under at four. Uh, and I think, what, we had 15? That Pretty close to that. Yeah. yeah. 40 RSVP. Yeah. It's the exact opposite of all of our events where nobody RSVPs and then everybody shows up. And those, everybody RSVPs and then, like, a third of them show there's up. there's no alcohol. The hell do you think? No one's going to go. Is, what is time it? is the event tomorrow? Is it, like, during business hours? That doesn't make any sense. Oh, it's like 9 a.m. First thing in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. It's it is what it is. Um, but yeah, so that's there's that event. We've got that going on. Uh, let's our end of year event, December 11th. Yeah, that, which will be over at Falling Down Beer Company. And there's a lot of good stuff coming together for that. In fact, I was just chatting with the uh, folks from Detroit Beer Press. They'll be out there with us. Yeah, we're collecting money for uh, collecting money and uh, stu- um, what are we? What are we collecting? Supplies for, uh, or backpacks? Or no, 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 no. Ki- uh, toys. Operation toys. Kid oh, for Kid Equip for to- Christmas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Their elf tour that they do. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, it is Operation Kid Equip, but I mean, this is the other thing they do. Um, it is not. Uh, school supplies, it's not anything like that. It is, you know, they, they yes, bring money, yes, bring toys. Um, I'll put together an FAQ here shortly like I do for the end-of-year events all the time. Uh, but, yeah, so, you know, kind of interesting. And then uh, the other thing that I was at where it was sort of a uh, surreal, uh, on Friday night I went to the premiere for a zombie-themed soda and energy drink. I saw that, and, and yeah, and, that, and, and I know that. I know, like, I see the look on your face, like you don't believe. No, that's really where I was. No, I saw the Facebook post. <laughs> I, I see just a gonna, picture I from gonna, you. I know you're there. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you, can, you can't deny it. you were tagged. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> Isn't it was, it, was it wasn't the consensus here. Aren't you two weeks too late? Well, and that was that was my one question was uh, you know hey you know you're it's the you know whatever it was the 14th or 13th of November you know yeah. wouldn't you have wanted this out for Halloween yeah like. Three, but I mean, I guess three, they, weeks ago. yeah. I mean, the idea just came up in April, uh, and so they were trying to cram as fast as they could, mm. uh, and that's just how the timing worked out. I mean, it's it's based on Deadwood, which I don't know, or yeah, Dead, Dead World. World. Sorry, Dead World. Um, it, it's been a long day, <laughs> and uh, which is the kind of the progenitor for Walking Dead. Uh, and so, you know, that's still out and that's still going. So, I mean, that's still a good thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, and it was, I mean, it's good stuff. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it was kind of fun. I got to finally meet Jay, uh, from the Get Your Geek On show. Hung oh, yeah. Out with, hung out with him. Uh, he's still wheeling around on a, on a knee cart because he's all laid up from surgery. I still saw pictures of him. Gross. Dude, his Ugh. leg is a mess. It's, he looks like a zombie from like the left leg down. <laughs> oh. Ouch. <laughs> Uh, but no, it was fun to hang out with him and, and yak and chat, uh, and then just get to know. I got to see uh, Kelly uh, O'Hara, who was uh, the, from Bebop Art that we had run into at Comic Con. Uh, so that was fun. I got, but which reminds me, I have your uh, pictures. Oh, yeah, thank in, you. in the back of my car, along with your mics and along with yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> she's the one that the rest did, of your life. She's the one that did the uh, the art that we bought at uh, Comic Con, right? The uh, the droids we're looking the for. The one that one piece of art that we bought at Comic Con, yes. <laughs> right? The one that was actually worth buying. Yes. Yes. She had yeah, the yeah, painted kiss heads. They were like twenty bucks for each one. I'm like, yes, I want that. <laughs> Well, yeah, so she posted something on her wall that just said, hey, I'm trying to get rid of these and had a photo of them. And I was like, I ta- I'm like, Bob, tag, Done. basement. Yeah. And he was like, ooh. I'm expecting one to <laughs> be know, like 100 bucks a piece. And she's like, 20 bucks. I'm like, yeah, I want cheesy poofs. It's going to get to the point where you're not going to be able to walk in your basement. No, it's already, yeah. I got so many autographs from like I got to fill up yet that are still loose. Uh, oh, yeah, it's awful. <laughs> I got to take down the Guinness pictures to put up all the 8x10s. It's awful. Well, yeah. you have to have priorities. So, uh, like first world basement problems. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, Dave, elephant in the room. Uh, so, did you have a good weekend? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, yes and no. You know, Saturday night was uh, was nice. You know, went out and celebrated the 10th anniversary with the wife. That was fun. And, you know, went to Mr. Paul's Chop House. Had a really nice meal. And, you know, they, they do really great food there. Absolutely love those guys. Uh, in fact, they re- they recognized me because of my Yelp review that I led. That, that I <laughs> they that really? They really did. So uh, you must sit here. No, I, I left them a really stellar Yelp review and basically bashing all the people who don't understand that, you know, if you go to a place like Mr. Paul's Chop House and you order the vegetarian platter, or they, have, they have trees in the parking lot for you to gnaw on <laughs> if that's what you're looking for. <laughs> I got an email from the new sushi bar in Rochester Hills because, like, the, the, I was reading the reviews waiting for my food. And the one girl was like, oh, I was here for brunch. And they, I, I was asking, I was trying to get some American fare, so I asked them for bacon and eggs, <laughs> and then, and then, <laughs> they said, "Well, we don't have that on the menu, but we can make something up." So, I mean, we have eggs and we have ham and stuff. And I said, "Well, maybe I don't really want that because it's not on the menu, so I just ordered something traditional." Because they gave them like a, bacon and eggs wasn't on a yeah, sushi on a sushi bar, on a yeah. sushi bar. and she gives them a one star for that. I'm like, so I write a review and I just rag on her, and I said, "You know what? It's a nice place. We had a nice meal." You know, it was good pricing. The owner sends me an email. He goes, thank you for saying what I wanted to say, and I'm too afraid to. Um, <laughs> yeah. That girl sucks or something. Goes, in broken English, it was amazing. <laughs> so, but yeah, and uh, and then uh, yeah, then all hell broke loose is what happened. And then my phone. What happened? Well, what happened, Dave? Well, my, my phone started blowing up, and, and I started getting uh, links to uh, someone uh, who had decided to take a blog entry that I wrote last week about basically getting involved in things in Detroit if, if you want to help guide the change and, and basically and don't sit by the sideline and complain about not being engaged if you're not getting engaged. And, you know, don't stand there and yell that the door is closed. Find either another door or find another building with an open door and go get involved and get engaged. What a crazy concept. Yeah, yeah, no. I don't understand. And somehow this schmuck bastard uh, decided that it would be lazy. Really good, lazy schmuck bastard decided that it would be a really good idea for the purposes of clickbaiting and race baiting over to his site and Facebook page that he would uh, frame it as blunt talk about race, you know, from from a <clears throat> from totally missing the point completely. Right. And so, yeah, my my weekend uh, then turned into, uh, I, I guess, damage control. Well, then the there was a lazier. Word. Oh, it, then, or, it, then, it, it, it got worse. Yeah, then there was, it got better. Then well, no, there was, the, oh no, no, no! Because when the la- even lazier jackhole came along, he immediately got shredded. He got destroyed. Yeah, by everybody. That's that was what I mean. That's how it got better. Right. So, but yeah, jackhole's I mean, a good name for him. By the yeah. way, yeah. And it's just one of those things where you know, like I don't get it. Like it's anyone. No, here's my thing. It's Dave. like you know, it's like I said in the. It's like I said in that in that comment thread that was going on last night. Like I, I don't understand when it became. The way things are, that if you are not a hundred percent positive about Detroit, like you can see no bad, you can talk no bad, you can hear no bad, and if you do say the slightest thing negative, you are annihilated and burnt at the stake, and you are you must be a racist, and you must be this, and you well, must you're not be a team that. player. Well, and you know, or you're not Detroit enough, or you're not this enough, or you're not that enough. Kind of sick of hearing that. Well, and it's one of those of things where, like, I what what really I'll be honest with you, you know, in, in the conversations, I had some very very good conversations with people over the course of this weekend um, and and today as well. And, you know, one of the things that really got hammered home to me is that the biggest problem is people have no interest in talking with you. They either want to talk at you or they want to talk about you. And they're not listening to you. They're waiting well, to talk. That's what I mean. What they're I've learned, talking at you. What I've learned, Dave, is, you know, I always, they always think journalism's dead right now. I think it's a loose term. 
But if you look at the two things that got, that happened this weekend, you did you had a CNN Money article, right? Yep. I had a, I remember I was on uh, the cover of Wall Street Journal when the housing boom yep. dropped, and the Free Press did an article on me, and uh, the Wall Street Journal picked it up. That guy called me four or five times, going, "Here's what I'm thinking about writing. Are you down with this?" Yep. You know, I go. And you is know, this okay? And what do you yeah. think about this? And what do you think about that? Spin? Well, dude, I'm actually just asking your permission even, first. Right? These clowns novel didn't concept. even bother to shoot a note. Going, no. here's what I'm writing. Well, in this, can I get your? Can you can you phrase some things for me? Can I get can I get in your head a little bit yeah, more? What was, so your, I can, what was your intent? What was right. your meaning? What was your this? What was your that? Well, like you know, the CNN money thing. They're getting ready to rerun that, and the reporter called me up. She's like, hey, I know we haven't talked to you in a year, but we're getting ready to rerun that piece, and I just wanted to fact check some stuff. So I got to tell her about, you know, no, it's not Detroit Net anymore. It's IT and the D. You know, yeah, we've got this podcast. Yeah, we've got this. Yeah, we've got that. It grows up a bit. Right. But they still called and fact checked it, even though they had already done that once before. Go figure. Well, things change. Novel concept. You know, that's but, professionalism right. 101. I didn't even know clickbait was a real thing, right? Oh, it and absolutely then, Oh, absolutely. Now I've... Well, because, you know, I've lived through it. Well, DB number one, you know, posted it not once, not twice. Four times. Not, yeah, exactly. And went went to the well, finally went to the well one too many times and started getting called out by all of his own readers. Because they saw, oh, yeah, you're just clickbaiting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's You're just race baiting at this point. Shut up. Go away. You know, da 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 da. Like, and then the people that read it, they go, I actually took the time to read it. And you're stupid. Like I well and that's like that's why and I'll be honest I mean that's the the disparity to me in the com I mean my like faith in humanity was restored with the Metro Times oh like, I'm not gonna lie yeah yes yeah. yeah. so, I mean it, you know the the initial bank of comments the people that actually took the time to read it and get it got it and and understood where I was coming from and what I meant and what my intent was and more to the point what the hell my intent wasn't um, the people that either just read the headline and reacted or. In the case of the Metro Times guy that put it out there, just read the headline and then did a word count. I think he's it, literally. I think he would more time counting the words. Yeah, if he would have actually read the article, then he did actually reading. He wouldn't anything. have even posted the way he posted. Right. It. So you know, it, it's I, I don't get it, and that's where you know, like I, I did. I went back, and it's something I we I, did get I offered. Have. We got offered to get that guy on the show. By the way, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Come on, baby, it's a trap. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> exactly. But no, so it's. Uh, <laughs> You know, I just I don't I don't get it. You know, like I said, I mean, and it's it's that conversation that I got into got into on Jair's wall last night, where it, it's that talking at you and that condescending, preachy, almost behind a pulpit, where you know you just don't understand, and you How don't dare get you it. Until people get involved and be the. You don't live in Detroit. Person. How dare you well, have an opinion about the city? But I mean, here's the—I mean, to me, it's business one hundred and one. I mean, I, and, and I know I've been in at least two of these situations, and I'm sure you guys have as well. Where you know what? There is nothing worse than an echo chamber or a tunnel vision viewpoint. Where if I mean, there was one company that I was at where I was literally the only executive at that company that that wasn't my only job that I'd ever had. Like I didn't grow up in that company and that's, you know, I had other experience and I had worked at other companies and other industries and that kind of stuff. And they had no idea how to deal with me because I didn't think the way that they thought and I didn't deal with things the way that they dealt with them. And that's the problem. And if you get into that echo chamber mentality of, you know, I, I only want viewpoints from like opinions or I only want viewpoints from like people, yeah. you're not going to get anywhere. It's and, not going to go just, very far at all. So, I mean, it was, yeah, I mean, but it was, I mean, it was, it was a very eye opening. Um, it is a learning experience though. No, right? it was, it's, I mean, it's, you know, it's, I get it and I did. I mean, the, I had a conversation, you know, I, I bounced back and forth a reply with, you know, a guy on our wall today where I said, I get it. Like I, you know, for people who don't know me uh, and, and if they read things with a certain mindset walking in. I knew who that guy was, but I used to work with him. Oh, I, you know, I said, it's, it's real easy to, you know, make certain assumptions and jump to conclusions and, and go ahead and, and go down that road. I get it. You know, and, you know, it's, and yeah, I mean, I did. I, I heard from a few folks that basically said, dude, I totally get where you're going, but wow, are you going to get lit up over this? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, sure enough, I did. And, and it is what it is. I mean, it's not, I'm still not saying that I was wrong. I, I'm still not. You know, client, I'm not holding a press conference to apologize for. Here's anything. the thing: if I'm anyone not, had, a, if anyone had a five minute conversation with you, they would understand because you write the way you talk, same as me. Right. It, you know, and it comes, it, it came across as snarky and a tad bit smarmy. I'm not going to oh, lie. Like every other article that we've ever read. Right. <laughs> but I'm in the same tone. And but if you don't, if you're not used to that, yeah, I could see like going, oh. 
kiss my ass that you, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> it's, you know, because there's a few things like the, 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 the artists, you know, I can see like the people here like going, I don't just write Detroit and Fago bottle caps, you asshole. Like I do more than, you know, but it, it but, but it, it, some but, of them do. <laughs> The one even admitted to like I, that was that was the funniest part. I don't just well maybe half my business is that. Like, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, but, I mean the the whole point of the Dave the whole is to be active in and be the force of change that you want to be and you want to see happen. And I don't see anything wrong. No, with I mean, that. Is, this that a, is this a don't be that guy uh, missing the point guy? It, 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 that? Dude, it, well, and here's the funny part. Like in the no, they intro- read between the lines. Dude, it's read the, between the lines. Read between the lines. Yeah. The first three lines of that whole article were, I know people are going to get pissed off about this because I knew they were just from bouncing the draft back and forth like I always do before we publish it out. I knew people were going to get ripped, but here's the Cracker Barrel conundrum. Go read that yeah. and make sure you're getting mad well, for the right reasons. Yep. J- the That's Dave, the first time you've actually done that, isn't it? Yeah. D- Dave's call to action was, was it was a, you made it a little bit simplistic, but people took offense to it. Like, you know, hey, go go get a bank loan. Hey, go go start a Kickstarter. Well, and go, go. That, hey. But, but see, like, but, but, Dave that, didn't, but, but you that were, right there, that right there is what people singled in on and yeah. took an excerpt out of, and that's what pissed me off more than saying. anything else. I wasn't saying, because, you know. It's oh, well, context. You, no, because it was, it was, they said, you know what, well, you know, you say go get a bank loan like it's so easy, and there's this, and there's that, and there's discrimination, and, that, and okay, that was only one thing that I threw out there. If, if only there were a company in Detroit that would give out loans <laughs> for people to... Do stuff like that, right? It's well, crazy. Well, and, or, and if not, and dude, and, and the example, like, and like I said, it's like I said in my reply on our page. You know what? It's the one time where I'm actually mad at myself for not writing more. Like I, I cut myself short on that article because I didn't want to keep rambling on and on. But it's you That's know a good idea. But yeah, I no, just, yeah, nothing good. Comes <laughs> no, back. because the, no, because the stuff that I didn't put in is what have eliminated this kind of nonsense. Like I look at you know the folks that we had in here from the Hatch Detroit contest. You know, yeah. there, there was only one winner. There was one one of those folks walked away with the fifty thousand dollars. The ones that didn't. Did they roll over and die? No. They're hosting neighborhood fundraisers. They're they're out on Indian. Oh, no, didn't Spielhouse Toys already open up? Yeah. yeah. Dude, and they're doing well, pop ups, they're doing everything imaginable. Yeah. Well, and third wave music is out on Indiegogo doing their right. thing. They're and, not know, giving up. No, because there are other options and there are other alternatives and there yeah. are other ways in. That was my point, is that don't look at just one... Don't be a defeatist. Right. You know, don't stand... Like I said, don't stand there screaming that the door is closed. Find another way in looking or for find a handout. another building. Well, one guy that was no, arguing... You made see, a... that, that's where it gets dangerous, not looking for a handout. No, 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 no. That, that's, that's what be... the people are looking for. No, there, it's... Uh, no, that, that's the dangerous... No, that's not what I'm saying. What it's It's not looking for a handout. It's... Sitting there by the sideline, more content to yell at people and more content about complaining about the situation or more content with tearing others down that are actually doing things. They're not sitting there looking for a handout. They're actually not even going that far because they're not doing anything. That's the part that annoys yeah. me more than anything else. And that's that's what I was saying is counterproductive to finding a solution to anything. And that made me young Donald Sterling. Who knew? No, but it was like the. <laughs> you, need was the him, you need to give him a shot. It was like the. It was like the bank building, and Dude, everyone. I was, I was so fired up on Saturday. You have no idea how much scotch I drank on Saturday. Night. You have no clue. Well, like everyone's fired up about the, the, the old bank. Well, you're building. out on a date with your wife, and it's like, sorry, honey, I have to check my phone. My phone's blowing up. Sorry, you know what? Honey, I, sorry, it, honey. I, she would even vouch for me on this. I I will give myself all the credit in the world. I knew what was going on and did not give a shit. Like I, I Good checked. For you. I, I, you know what? We were, out, we were out at dinner. Didn't look at my phone once. When we got to Stray Cat, which is actually where we went first, yep, I popped open my phone. I saw because it was blowing up. Yeah, and I saw a couple messages on my wall. Typed out two replies quick. Put my phone back away. Well, it's a total I didn't blindside. Look. Like I took a screen cap and sent it to him. Like uh, WTF? And <laughs> yeah, and that began the f that guy. Yeah. <laughs> my, <laughs> well, no. The, my my point was, you know, being on on, you know, when the bank building thing all went on. And everyone's screaming about this guy's buying this building and what's he going to do with it? It's not going to be right. And it's like, well, the bu- building's been vacant for twenty years. Where, where, where were you? Like, what'd you do? Well, and that was the. Like, how come you're not? Yeah. Why didn't you get 
yeah. a thousand people together. Why didn't you? Yeah, because if, you know if it's that important to you, make it happen. A thousand people with a thousand dollars is the same thing as one person with. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's that. I mean, like that's the part that I again. I there are options, there are alternatives, and I get that no one solution. And there's no quick fixes, and there's no easy answers, and there's no any of that stuff. And I and yeah, I mean, on some level, I did kind of paint it with a broad brush. I'm not a journalist. I'm not. Dude, I, I wrote things based on my own observations and based on what I've seen in my own experience, which is every single freaking post did, we've ever had. But you know what's funny, Dave? You actually wrote something. The people that are pretending to be journalists out there just copied and pasted your crap. Right? <laughs> What? You write something, Mr. <laughs> journalist yeah. asshole. Like, no, seriously. Like Billy brought it up to me, and he goes, "Right, like, wait a minute. So you're a journalist, but you all you do is copy other people's writing, right? Weren't we called Bull journalists crap. at one point? No, we're not. We're not. We were called the media. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah. because there's a big difference, right? Yeah, we're no, not. I don't want to be no. either. Uh, but yeah, so that was uh, that was the entertaining part of the weekend, and then you know, yeah, and then yeah, so that giant ball of stress leading into my daughter going in for a relatively minor surgery this morning. Um, so I, you know, we were already waking up at five a.m., and so yeah, I think I got. Honey, about- why do you drink so much? Yeah, oh, you're looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so uh, yeah. It was it was definitely an interesting weekend, and like I said, I mean it it was it was eye opening. It was I, I did I, I enjoyed most of the conversations that I had with people, uh, but I mean that was that was the key thing: the conversations that I had with people, where they were engaged in talking. I, I literally after two replies, there was one woman who said that I'm everything that's wrong with Detroit. Well, see, and there's, always, there's and, a, and that I'm why she hates people moving to Detroit. <laughs> there's always going to be like, I'm like, you missed the memo. I didn't move to Detroit. Yeah, there's always gonna be, <laughs> there's always going to be trolls, right? Dave. Uh, but but you know, faith in humanity is restored when you've got people that that lambasted the article without yeah. reading it, and then you call them out on it. They go went back and read it, and they're like, yeah, you know, I, I see your. But point. But then they never say point. I'm sorry. They never they, say well, they never oh, do that. You're right. Well, and never... so that, like that's the funny part. So like that's the the author uh, that wrote the uh, that old Detroit, new Detroit essay. Yeah. You know, that's that was one of my points about that is you know she had posted something the follow up following day about an infographic that was trying to rationalize and justify some things. And here's another novel concept: you actually link to your source material. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> and not only that, but I mean, I and I just said, look, nobody reads the reach. Nobody reads retract- Nobody's, nobody no. reads adjustments. Nobody reads no. anything Dave, a day is, or two later. No. Dave, the whole point of, you know, be part of the solution. If you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem, right? Yeah, I'm not the first person to ever say that. No, I get that. <laughs> Dave, and it's not, just God, from, I hope not. And it's not just from Detroit. I remember this. this I, I got this told to me 20 years ago at my German club, and I'm DJing Oktoberfest, and some of the old people were complaining about the music. And I said, great, you go buy DJ gear. You go you compile go the music. You do it next year. Like, and yeah. I'll sit. I'll sit in my chair and I'll go. You suck. Yep. <laughs> you know. You go lug, lug this sh- shit in your car. Well, I mean, and that was the, that was the other part of the conversation I had. You know what? I I have, dude. You know what? I lived downtown Boston. I lived on Capitol Hill in D.C. Yeah, I've done my time. You know, in cities and that kind of stuff, in urban areas and urban environments. And yes, I've had these same conversations. It's nothing new. These are that's not. A, that's a problem when you stick your neck out. It, it, it's it's. I think it's you a, took a stand, and people tried right? to uh, beat you down. Like for I'm, it. like Charles Charles just got laid out because the food wasn't up to the standards. And it's like, well, you go do the catering. Yep. and work for three days. He worked his ass off to make sure that food was tight at that party. This and you're going to complain about it. We can't have nice things. No, no, but it's like you do it. You know, I'm, you shouldn't complain about. It. You go, hey, how can I help you make it better next year? Yeah, right. That's what you should tell me. Dude, it's, it's like, like I told- hey, Bob, I didn't like a couple songs you played. Can I sit with you next year and put together the playlist for this party? Well, how many times yes. have you heard me say that I, I've told every tech lead that I've ever had over the course of my career, do not come to me with a problem. Because if you've thought about it long enough to know that it's broken, you've thought about it long enough to know at least two ways it could be better. Right. And if not, all you're doing is bitching. You, you, you have at least one solution in your head. I know you do. I mean, you want to go gripe? Yeah, we'll go have a beer, and you can wind to your heart's content. But. You know, there, there there should be a new feature on Facebook for the trolls. That you know, kind of like the the EULA, where you know you have to actually prove that you read the end user license agreement. That's you right. Have to, you, have, you have to actually prove that you read the article before you can comment they're on not the article. Prove it. A, a read cha. <laughs> hey, we are coming. <laughs> <A read-cha. laughs> <laughs> we are coming up against the break. We got two awesome guests in the studio. We are. We got Dennis here from Detroit Fanfare Comic Book Show, and we got Alan here from a Prend, a cool uh, new 
a class teaching people how to code. Now, don't um, think don't think I didn't notice that it, it was very French. Is it apprendre or is it apprendre? Apprendre. Apprendre. Because it is well, apprendre, well, which is to learn. Well, it, it's a conjugation of apprendre, which means both to learn and to teach. Yeah. Oh, I have no idea what we're geez. talking about. <laughs> this is the IT the D show. It's, it's, he's already lost stuff. us. We'll be right back. IT in the D. Read. Meet. Listen. Networking Detroit, one beer at a time. Hi, I'm Brittany Daniel from The Game, and you're listening to IT in the D Show. The IT in the D Show is brought to you in part by Logicalis. Logicalis is an international IT solutions and managed services provider with expertise in communications and collaboration, data center, and cloud services. Employing nearly 3,700 people worldwide with more than 20 offices in the U.S., including two in Metro Detroit. Find out more at us.logicalis.com. This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D Show. The IT in the D Show is brought to you in part by Quantum. A word from Quantum, a storage company with a different approach. Quantum offers industry-leading backup and DR solutions with products that integrate innovative deduplication, replication, and cloud technologies. Our archive solutions help you retain data longer and keep it accessible, leveraging technologies like direct object storage, intelligent tiering, and LTO. Quantum Scale-Out Storage is designed to accelerate complex information workflow. Powered by StoreNext 5, it is the industry's fastest streaming file system. Visit www.quantum.com for more information. MZ. All right, we are back live. The IT and the D Show, episode Route 66. We're sitting here in the Raw Radio X studios in the Russell Industrial Center, beautiful Midtown Detroit, Michigan. This is Mr. Monday Night Bob, the sales guy here with Dave the Geek. <laughs> Jeff, the voice of reason. Never a dull moment. All-star cast in the studio. Find us online, itandthed.com. All Twitter things. slash hashtag. All of the things, IT and the D. Ambersan, IT and the D, Facebook. Schwa, we yeah. are we IT and the D. You, you are not. still not. Who, <laughs> o- who owns the Chiefs? <laughs> owns. owns. Uh. <laughs> anyway. So what the heck's going on? Oh. Oh, ah. Uh. Best in life. <laughs> Crush your enemies. <laughs> See them driven before you. They hear a lamentation of the women. <laughs> True words have not been spoken. <laughs> True words. I'm glad you have that on a sound bite now. <laughs> of course I do. Every, about every three months we need to bring that back. <laughs> just make that the three minute intro. Is it like on, on repeat? Loop. <laughs> <laughs> no more music, just that on loop. Yeah, right. right. All right, so who are we diving in with? Um, um, yeah, Alan. All right. He lost the. the he lost yeah, the point he, toss. He, he lost the beef the jerky toss. pull. <laughs> <laughs> I suck at oh, it. Just leg sounds wrestling. <laughs> so, Alan, I mean, we know you uh, because of actually one of our favorite people, uh, and and like we, I always keep saying things like that. And I go, not that she needs any more ego stroking, but <laughs> <laughs> no comment. Kind of stroking. <laughs> no, kind very, of... very well said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should have come along for the bar tour, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. No, so uh, we know you because of Erica, and and you've but in your own right, you've got some very very cool things going on. I mean, you've been a teacher at GDI, uh, which is yep. how you guys met, and now you're yep. kind of breaking off and doing your own thing with Apprend. So, like, what is like how did I guess just a little intro on you, a little background on you, and and why Apprend? Sure. Yeah. So I am a graphic designer by education, um, but by work experience, I'm a developer. Okay. And so I've been doing that for the last seven or eight years. I taught for the first time with GDI about two years ago, um, and I took that a little bit further. I was teaching with Grand Circus as well. And I have just noticed this, this gap where a lot of people were asking, you know, after this class that I took with these organizations, what's next? What's, what's level two? Uh, the inevitable... Yeah. And then, well, that, and that's, then. that's actually Bob's favorite favorite uh, question. Like, you know, the path. Like, what's next? Right. And and a lot of people they say, how do I take the next step without quitting my job and devoting my life to right. being a developer? Like, what's step two and a half, yeah. three? Yeah. You know, not step ten. How do I get my feet wet without really jumping in the pool? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Then profit. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Something. Something. Question mark. Profit. Right. And so, I'm starting a trend to offer classes for people to, you know learn about technology, learn how to code, 
learn, and and for for people who already know how to code too, uh, a lot of people that I was teaching during the doing those programs, they were looking to make a career change, and every once in a while they had some technical experience. Maybe they're like, hey, I was a de- .NET developer, but I want right. to know how to do this. Um, but by and large, they're all beginners, and they're like, hey, now I took this class, I'm not ready to go do dev boot camp or quit and do my job and do the Detroit Labs Apprentice program, and I'm not ready to just you know, be self-motivated and go study for two years yeah, and then come steps. back. Right. Yeah. 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 I've, so, got, so, I've got a mortgage to pay. <laughs> right, exactly. So, yeah. so, so what's the next step? And so I see that gap as an instructor doing all this stuff, as I've been teaching people how to code. I see that gap. And I think that with myself, with some classes, I mean, I'm not an expert in everything. I'm an expert maybe in a couple of things if I'm being very generous to myself. Um, I want to teach some classes, and I want to find other people who want to teach classes. Okay. Right? And so that, that's what Apprend is about. Well, yeah, I mean, you are actually just in the – I mean, it's, what, two weeks old now? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I mean, it's, it's an idea that's been incubating for a while. I launched the Meetup site. I found a space to teach my first class in January. It's going to be January 19th at the uh, Detroit Creative Quarter Center. We're going to teach um, an, an intro to coding class with JavaScript. Cool. Um, and so you can find that on uh, meetup.com. It's just meetup.com slash apprend. Yep. A-P-P-R-E-N-D. Yep. Well, and we had the link in the uh, the yep. blast that went out today, and we'll have it in the write-up tomorrow. Yep. Yep. Great. And so... So that's going to be the first class. Uh, so is this just between, for is this just for pros, Alan? Or are you like there's some programs that are for kids, some are just for uh, girls. Or, I mean, are you just is this just open? Sounds like a, across the board, right? Yeah. So so that that that's a that's a key thing that I, I think is different about this. It's going to be just across the board. It's not just for pros, um, and it's I'm not really targeting a specific demographic. Um, I'm targeting people who are interested in learning how to write software. Okay. So and, and I found it. So one of the actually one of the notes that I have here from one of the stories that was floating around is is a site that you just mentioned, Dev Bootcamp, um, which is basically a seventeen week program that will you know at the end of it it says okay you're a developer go do. Interesting take on the article that I was reading was Dev Bootcamp is essentially getting and putting out there. It, it's almost like the the end of days sign because it's the same thing that was happening at the end of the tech bubble burst or the end of the tech bubble back in 99, you know, 2000 where everybody was pumping out MCSEs and, you know, and, and all these other, you know, P, all these other, you know, barely qualified students that were, okay, yeah, now you're a developer, go do, and getting these overinflated salaries and, and getting dumped onto projects that they weren't really ready for. And so they said, okay, like is, you know, is dev boot camp and, and programs or are dev boot camp and programs like that kind of the sign of the end times for the tech bubble that we're looking at right now, which is a little scary because it, in my mind, it's actually just getting back to normal. I don't know that I look at it as a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, like you know, I mean, you look at the you know the Metro Detroit area right now is uh, the market is so damn tight for talent. Where you know the, the programs like this, I mean, to me, I think they're a great idea because they get people out there as long as they're kept in context. That yeah, at the end of the day, you got somebody that went through a three week class, an eight week class, a seventeen week class, and that's who they are and what they do. I mean, I guess like so. <clears throat> From your perspective, you know, starting one of these groups and starting one of these regiments, like how do you keep people from falling into that same trap and that same mindset? So I'm not attempting to be the, you know, where the buck stops, where I say, if you come take this regiment of classes, then you have this job at the end of it. And and that that's more structured than what I think um, is going to happen with, with a brand. Which, it, good. Right. And, be, and not not because I don't think that it's possible to do that. But I think that that would be a really hard thing to get right. In my experience, becoming a developer or being an expert in some aspect of technology, it's it's like a lifelong pursuit almost. You know, you don't just get that off of. Well, and you know, probably eight times out of ten, it's accidental. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. You, you you get into it, and then you realize, oh, this is where, this is what I've been missing, and then you throw you throw your energy into it. Well, it's like you said. I mean, you're right? you're a graphics guy by background and training, but you're a developer based on because of what you do. Yeah, I mean, when I was when I was graduating, it's uh, probably why he's employed too, because he can play both sides of that. Right. You know, when, when I was getting my graphic angle. design degree, and I had 
professors that were telling me to go to a studio or go to a, a print shop to do a press check and like use a loop <laughs> to inspect how you know the color separation was rendering. Right. And then I had other people. They're like, "Hey, you know, um, your work's not going to get printed. It's going to get put on the internet. So you should probably know about that." And see yeah, that. yeah. So it, it was really for me. It was just a survival technique. It's right. Like, okay, I have to know about how my work's going to get published, and that opened up the can of worms of, oh, I really like this. Oh, I can learn how to write code. And, well, and, and, and I think that I'm not alone. Um, I know a lot of people in IT that are self-educated. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? And My degree is not in CS at, at all. Exactly. Not even close. I mean, I was taught COBOL in college. I taught yeah, exactly. myself even HTML. People, and yeah, even people with tell, CS degrees don't necessarily. Tell me how yeah, often you use the, the, those COBOL skills. COBOL uh, skills today. Zero. Yeah. Exactly right. <laughs> uh, Erica just chimed in. I heard that on yeah. Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. Love you, mean it. Yeah, I, right. I replied to her. Okay, thanks. No, nothing but hugs and kisses to you. Right. So, uh, so you, you saying things like Dev Bootcamp being a canary for the tech bubble. Uh, from the work that I've been doing at Apogee um, in IoT and working on a JavaScript platform for developers, uh, we we identified. Uh, uh, like the the number is that in the next five to ten years we're going to have a shortfall worldwide of 34 million developers Yikes. because you know y- you can buy toys now you can buy things like um like a Belkin Wemo that turns yep. your you know things for the first world that like turn your light switch on and off from the internet um but Debate that in buying but, those by the way right but but <laughs> that kind of technology is going to find its way into more mature products that are going to start actually solving problems that affect people on a, a level that isn't just like, oh, it's more convenient if I can do this thing from, you know, a mile away. I can well, turn, like, wait, well, I like can turn on the lights on the ca- at the cabin well, from Right. Well, well, we were joking about, about that on the way technology over. Is I said go. it's the Internet of Things, and I'm going to be able to hack his refrigerator and turn his uh, freezer off and melt his ice cream. Right. <laughs> right. It, that kind of technology is going to go <laughs> from be awesome. being is, is going to go from being that kind of thing and that kind of like why would Just I actually kidding. ever want to do Did that? I do that. Why yeah. do I want my refrigerator to tweet? Actually, you never wanted your refrigerator to tweet. But the guy who built that is going to eventually build something that's going to be really useful. It's going to be solving real problems. Yeah. I never understood and, that. And we're going to need developers to be able to write that software. If I could name my refrigerator Blue Warrior, and then it could tweet out, <laughs> Blue Warrior needs food. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we'll have arrived by then. <laughs> Valkyrie is about to die. <laughs> I never understood. Like, so I get the internet. There's a lot of like the internet of things make sense to me, but there's I think it's going it's going a little bit too far. Like they've been trying to push the 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 internet enabled refrigerator down our throats for like twelve years now, right? And it's toilet. It, oh, it, it it's awful. Just um, because you can do something doesn't mean you should do something. It's right. a pipe dream. I'm going to pipe in on his segment on you on this, but it's no, a pipe ahead. dream of everyone who manufactures that to know when you are out so they can push it on you or push their substitute. And that's been the pipe dream. That's why they've been pushing it for twelve years. Now, don't get me wrong. If there's a way, like, okay, so I was grocery shopping on Saturday, and if there's a way that, like, I could go, okay, you know what? I didn't look. Crap. Do we need eggs? And like, I could tweet at my fridge, and then my <laughs> fridge would like tweet back and go, "Yes, I'm actually." Except need for eggs. the fact that if you bought the same a lot eggs harder than that every but, week, but you don't, don't want twenty emails from the other nineteen twenty egg manufacturers saying. Use our eggs instead. You're low in your refrigerator. Meyer and Kroger will start saying, "Hey, here's a coupon for eggs." Dave, just put a webcam in your fridge. <laughs> no, the, no, because the light won't be on. But the light. Oh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so then I need the uh, the IoT appliance to turn the light on in my fridge. Right. But just have Alan write an cab. API to open the door so the light comes on, so the camera turns. <laughs> just tell the mouse. Right. Tell the mouse inside. I'll him. have my Roomba come in and open the fridge. <laughs> <laughs> this is where society ends. Right. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I mean, that, and that's that is some of the other stuff that we were talking about. I mean, we got to you know we got to yakking about drones and all that other fun stuff because I mean it's it's not just Our these classes. Topic. Well, yeah, I mean it's not just these classes you're doing. You're doing some very cool stuff um, just on the side. So, like I said, I mean you know or I guess not necessarily on the side, but apogee. Exactly. Sorry, full time job. You're right. <laughs> No, but I mean, you've, you've got some really cool stuff going on. So, you know, this really is, you know, something that carries through from your day job into the outside world and into everything that you have going on. And I mean, that's good because you're not you're not coming at it from a purely academic standpoint where, you know, this is what I think people should be learning. You know, I mean, you're you see this and live this and know this every day. 
I, I started teaching about two years ago, and I really fell in love with it. I want to continue doing that. Um, and currently, there's, there's a gap in terms of what's available in the city um, today, and I want to try to fill that gap with, with a friend. So be it just the what level that the classes are being taught or the frequency that they're being taught at or the people that they're being targeted towards, um, I, I think that there's a real opportunity, one, for me to continue on that passion, and two, to introduce some people to technology and, and change their careers nope. and change their lives. Which so. is great. I mean, and, and so for that thing in January that's coming up, I mean, what do people, like, do, like do, I guess, what's involved in registering for it? What do people have to have? Do they need a laptop? Do they need software? What, what's, what's involved with, hey, you know what, this sounds like a cool idea. Yeah, I'm going to go. Sure. Yeah, uh, for, for the class in January, it's called Intro to Programming. I'm going to learn how to write software with JavaScript. You just need a laptop. Um, soft, <laughs> software is free. Remember remember when we used to laugh at JavaScript? Remember? Yeah. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> well, 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 now JavaScript does everything. It I know. Be, it can be it's, your it's database, and it can be your That's server That's very tech, cool and, and very scary at tech. the same time. I know. It's, it's, Java. So, so, so regardless of how you feel about, about JavaScript <laughs> as, a, as a language, uh, I, I think that's a pretty smart way to get people introduced because it, they, they can bifurcate and say, like, hey, I want to go and write code for the server. It's like, that's great. You can write it in Node. Yep. It's like, hey, I want to go be a front-end developer. That's great. You can you know, write JavaScript on the front-end, yep. too. And it's like, are, are those the reasons why you're choosing JavaScript? As I mean, I know this is intro, and you're <laughs> expecting people to be a little bit tech-savvy, but... Are you anticipating that might be a steep learning curve from a syntax point of view? I, I think um, as compared a, to HTML or something. As like a that. beginner, um, I think if it's a programming language and it's not a, just like markup, um, if it's actually programming and doing logic and and learning about loops and variables and okay. control right. flow and all that kind of stuff, it's a steep learning curve. I don't care what language you pick. Some languages are less steep than others. Right. right. You know, like if I said, hey, intro to programming with Objective-C. You know? <laughs> right. So that, that would be an even steeper learning curve. So Assembly. I, I, right, exactly. <laughs> but I, I don't think that there's any way around the whole steepness of the learning curve. Okay. Um, JavaScript happens to be one of the languages that I know best. I mean, I, I've taught a class similar to this for a while in Ruby. Um, and, and I like Ruby, um, but... It's really no one difficult. else does, apparently, though. Well, well, I mean, a lot of people do, but it's really difficult for, for people to say, hey, how do we use this next? I was like, I don't know. Go learn Rails. It's like, yeah. Yeah. Right. That, so, that's, that's the thing. You know, companies don't want it in this area. That's, that's the it, only issue. It, it, exactly. So in terms of the most marketable skill for your buck, I think JavaScript is the right way to go. Interesting. Uh, in order to sign up for it, meetup.com slash apprend. You can sign up right on the website. So uh, how, much they, how much experience do they need or classes before they can even get it? In, get walk into a door and say, "Hey, I'm I'm good. Hire me for X." Sure. Uh, well, that's that's a that's a different. That's outside of the scope of this class. This yeah, this, this class will not get you. A job. No, I'm saying how much. No, I'm well, saying right, how but, much. But you but need to do. Let's, let Let's let him answer question one, sure. oh which God. is which is what do I need to do to go to the class? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Yeah. J- j- just register on the website or on the, on the meetup website. Um, and is this and you, uh, and what, what's the what's that? the uh, cost to entry? Uh, the Sorry, the class it's twelve hours of instruction. It's one hundred and eighty dollars. Okay. Cheap. And I yep. walk in with like I, I need to have a laptop walking yep. in. I La- need to walk have... in with a laptop and um, you know just your attention. Okay. That, that, now, that's now Bob, go. <laughs> What's next? And then, and then they just leaked one of the characters from Star Wars: Force Awakens, Darth Bane. I just wanted to tell that. Bane, seriously? <laughs> yeah. Is that a Batman character? It's Bane. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Is he wearing He's the stupid from mask? The comic and books. now you have yeah. my permission to use the Force. <laughs> uh, exactly. Uh, <laughs> since we hit this level, by the you way, know, I'm so sorry. That is the that that's worse than. I'm disappointed you didn't realize episode 66 and order 66, the order that the emperor gives. Execute order 66. How did we not? Yeah. Because we had the weekend from hell. Are you serious? Dude, I had the weekend from hell. Start over. Red Let, Mulligan. Let's Mulligan. I don't know. I don't really want to live this weekend over again. <laughs> Order 66. <laughs> but, but Wipe them out. Dennis, them. Dennis gets the kudos for that one. Yes, he does. It's an epic fail on yes. our part. <laughs> well, we're all, I'm, I'm going to be honest, we're all so focused on episode 69 at this point. Okay. Yeah, right. Sorry. <laughs> Looking forward. <laughs> Why? Forward. Why? Because we're all so Superman old. and Batman up here. That's right. right. <laughs> yes, yes, they are. Well, that's a 68. <laughs> so so what do uh, so it's it, I'm sorry you said 12 hours of instruction. Yep. It's going to be a 4-day class. Okay. And and so expectation walking out of it. The expectation walking out of it will that will be that you'll have a great foundation for self-study. Um and 
for to take another class that is offered in the future. Okay. I so. asked that same question. You said I was stupid. No, I told you to wait until he was done answering <laughs> oh. the first question, and then I doubled back to your question. I no. Wait your to, turn, Melvin. Because I was trying to segue back to you like a good guy would. Note to no, self. You're going to go ahead and call me out? You want to play this game? Note to you self. I mean? Keep my mouth shut when you got coders talking. <laughs> So, Didn't so, you learn so that episode, to episode answer, uh, four? <laughs> to answer your question again, um, a lot of people that, again. I, that, I, that I've um, had as students, um, most of them were not actually looking to become developers, but they, were, they wanted to empathize with the developers that they were currently working with. And they were in some type of marketing role or they were in a leadership role. And they See, say, I, was gonna I want to be able to talk so, to my so, developers. So we should just send Bob to the class. Yeah, right. I'm, I'll, dude, I'm going to write you a check right now to send Bob to that class. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Student number one. I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's what I was going to ask is, you know, should it be, you know, techies that are looking to do this? I mean, but yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that more and more in the business world today, like, I mean, the, the days of the business only project manager are, are, if not already dead, very close to it because, you know, they want somebody from a technical background that understands both technology and business. And that's starting to leak into a lot of other roles throughout companies where they want people that at least – that are capable of performing a sniff test in a meeting. Exactly. You know, you know, yeah, you're telling me that's going to be 16 weeks. I smell crap. I mean, that's that's not going to happen. <laughs> or, or you have the hey, have we need the we need to head. hire someone for this role. Does anyone know what they're going to end up doing once right. we start? What exactly them? will you be doing here? Right. And, and not to say that hey, we um, just hired three developers and none of them have the skill sets we need. <laughs> Woo! Uh, great. Fire your recruiting department. Right. Right. So. So, the, so there's that aspect of, of people wanting to be able to work more effectively with the technical people that are already on their staff. There's the, hey, I want to transition. I know tech is hot. I've been doing something else for the past 15 years of my life, and I want to get into tech. This would be a good first step. Um, and for me, it's a good first step, too, because I, I've taught before. I've taught plenty of classes before. Um, but I've always just shown up with the curriculum and taught and didn't have to deal with the nitty-gritty. So for me, this is... I know how to teach the class, but for me, the 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 newness of this is how do we organize it? How do we get people in there? Enrolling how does it get the marketed? Get and, mar- all stuff, yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And so that to me is the challenge. And so I'm, the first class I'm doing, I'm teaching it, and it's a it's a topic that I know. Um, I'd really like, in addition to getting students into the class, I'd really like to find people who want to teach, and people who say, "Hey, I want to teach about this," and get students enrolled for that. And whether or not they're teaching a beginner level class, I'm teaching a beginner, beginner level class in January. I don't necessarily want to just teach beginner level classes. Sales needs to be taught. I'm telling you right now, I know coding is essential. Sales needs to be taught. You can come teach a sales class. I can? Friend. You can. <gasps> oh, see, this is where it all begins. Alan, I don't know if you can afford them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, know if you, well, I don't know if you can based afford on the, the liability moment. insurance. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. That, that's what I can't afford. Can, can, wait, can we have growlers or falling down beer in in, in your uh, classroom? You, you actually, it's a requirement. And well, yeah, does, well, it, if, does, if, does if, a friend have an HR department yet? That's the big. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, Erica. <laughs> oh well, then you're good. <laughs> Would that mean that she's the de facto HR department for her second organization in a row? Yes, exactly. Yes, yeah. yes pretty much. Hey, we are coming up against a break. How do we? Um, one more time. How do we find you? Meetup.com slash apprend. Well, and we'll double, double back P. in the fourth segment, I'm sure. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. He's not going anywhere. We'll be yeah. back in a minute with Dennis from Detroit Fanfare. This is the IT and the D show. We'll Thanks be right guys. back. Yeah, we'll be right back. IT and the D. Read, meet, listen. Networking Detroit. One beer at a time. <laughs> Dig, you IT geeks. This is Dre DeMatteo from Sons of Anarchy. You are listening to IT and the D. The IT in the D Show is brought to you in part by Logicalis. Logicalis is an international IT solutions and managed services provider with expertise in communications and collaboration, data center, and cloud services. Employing nearly 3,700 people worldwide with more than 20 offices in the U.S., including two in Metro Detroit. Find out more at us.logicalis.com. This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D Show. The IT in the D Show is brought to you in part by Quantum. A word from Quantum, a storage company with a different approach. 
Quantum offers industry-leading backup and DR solutions with products that integrate innovative deduplication, replication, and cloud technologies. Our archive solutions help you retain data longer and keep it accessible, leveraging technologies like direct object storage, intelligent tiering, and LTO. Quantum Scale-Out Storage is designed to accelerate complex information workflow. Powered by StoreNext 5, it is the industry's fastest streaming file system. Visit www.quantum.com for more information. Right, we're back. <laughs> Episode execute order 66. This is the IT and the D show. We're sitting Lovely. in the Raw Radio X Studios. That's right. You know it's a good break when you have to go, okay, and we're going back live. And the, we're, <laughs> we are in the Russell Industrial Center. Get beautiful. Beautiful no. Midtown Detroit, Michigan. This is Bob, the sales guy, here with Dave the Geek, Jeff, the voice of reason. Had a fun episode or uh, segment two with alan yeah and uh, we are we are uh, actually it's a privilege to have dennis here from the detroit fanfare join us Appreciate and wonder world comics and, and, and wonder world, world comics. comics he's he's a man with many hats not just the one that he usually wears <laughs> 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 no so i mean it, it was good i mean I, I reached out to you because of dom regio yeah um who has we 17 a, jobs right who has more <laughs> jobs than any of us uh and you know had a great conversation with him and he's like look you've got to you've got to get in touch with Dennis. It, he'd be a great guest on the show. He's a lot of fun. He's got a lot of cool stuff going on. And I went out and looked, and I mean, I, I'll i be honest with you, I didn't know the history of Fanfare. I didn't know you know, I, I mean, yeah, I, I knew about Wonder World Comics, but I, like, I didn't know about the involvement with the comic convention and all that stuff going on. It's an interesting history. Yes, I mean, so I, I just real Well, quick, I haven't Dennis. even given you the half of it. I wanted to surprise you on air. Uh, this year here in Detroit is the 50th anniversary of Comic Cons. Really? 1965, the Detroit Triple Fanfare was the first ever comic book convention put on Detroit by Detroiter Sheldorf yeah. and Jerry Bales. Shell then goes out to with his family to California and puts on this little thing called uh, San Diego Comic Con. Right. <laughs> that little uh, minor, little minor minor event lip. that, you know, no one goes to that thing. Without right? him at the helm, it went on for a couple more years, but it kind of languished away and we resurrected it 5 years ago. <laughs> Stop. Stop. <laughs> this is actually a cool thing. <laughs> That's a great thing. We have a thing here. If you say, like, a, if you, like, hit a milestone, we uh -oh. give, the slow, give the slow clap. You know, slow like, clap. There we go. <laughs> so I, I actually read that, that on, on your too. website because I, I mentioned the, 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 it was 1964 year where a bunch of guys got together, right? So it was the first ever swap meet, but it wasn't organized into a convention until 65. Okay. And then that's where we're celebrating the 50th this year rather Got than it. last year. Comic Cons have been going on for that long? 50 years. God damn. And they started here in Detroit. Which nobody knows. I know, but that's. I, the wait, 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 wait. wait. Comic, comic book conventions started in Detroit? Yes. Absolutely. Wow. I, and, and I, everybody that, assumes it's right, San see, Diego. That's the thing. But, well, that's my new knowledge for today. I had no idea. But this, everyone awesome. assumes that, you know, oh, well. Comic Cons is a San Diego thing. No, it actually started as a Detroit thing and then migrated to California. And unless Sheldon tells you on Big Bang Theory, <laughs> you're never going to know the history of it. I had, you no, know, I had no idea, Dennis. Yeah, no, exactly. I had no idea. Absolutely. That's, that's awesome. So, you know, the term Comic Con has been kind of become this generic term that everyone and their brother uses. But we use the Detroit Fanfare rebranding. To pay tribute to that first comic book convention. So, no, and what, so, okay, so, and I have been doing a little reading, and fanfare is a little different than other cons that go on in the area, but from your perspective, why is fanfare different? This is a good story. Fanfare is the return of that intimate hotel show, that the way they started. You check in for a weekend, you are there day in, day out, to just immerse yourself in comic book conventions. I well, really, you've kind of set this up. As, I mean, it's you're, you're calling it a concation. Yes, well, it's a vacation <laughs> away from all of the other cons, right. That have really become a glorified flea market. Yeah, you know, people roll in with their carts, they set their tables up. Even the celebrities, they roll in with their bag and they start putting their stacks of pictures out of yeah. everything they've ever done. That is so true, and That's it's absolutely it's, true. And it's in a in a big giant place where the acoustics are horrible and it kills the energy in a room. We put. 
you know, 5,000 people. Maybe that's why we were always at the bar for the entire duration. <laughs> right, exactly, absolutely. Because exactly why. Take a lap through the convention, have a lap at the bar. Yeah, have, right. yeah three hours at the bar, half but, hour in the show. But, Bob, the you were at Fanfare 12 where we had uh, Sam Jones, yep. Flash Gordon. Oh. Ah. Ah. And we were actually bidding. We found this out. Look out, Flash! We found this out tonight, but... Bob and I were bidding against each oh, other for Dave Santillas. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't bidding. I told my guys I had to go he pay. I had to go pay so the hard. actors. I said, "Go to a thousand dollars, and I, that's as high as I'm willing to go." Shush! <laughs> Don't tell people what I paid for that. Thing. <laughs> and so, dude, we both have ours hanging in our living rooms. <laughs> exactly. Uh-oh. What, what are you looking for? Wife just found out how much you really paid no, for a, it. a pen so I can erase Bob's F Bob in the syndication. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, so the, the finer moments of my life. I'll but be what would you have it's rather met, Mark? <laughs> Sam Jones, one of the coolest actors in one of the coolest parts. Would you have rather met him on this hard concrete floor where he was just there, you know, being sucked up by the giant fluorescent lights? No, Bob or, wants him in his living room. Exactly. <laughs> no, Bob tied Bob up with duct tape. Like, <laughs> exactly. No, that's up on the sixth floor here. Yeah, met him in the met him in the suite. <laughs> Soft lights, candles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Back staring, drawn, staring into each other's eyes, his gorgeous baby blues. <laughs> somewhere, somewhere off in the distance, look out, Flash! <laughs> <laughs> Can I be flying blind? blind on a rocket cycle? <laughs> Can I be Hawkman, please? <laughs> please, I want to be Brian Blessed. <laughs> See, and Bob and I are two fat guys with beards, so we're gonna fight over that. We're gonna fight over who gets to be his Voltan. Do I see a thousand ten? Do I? <laughs> You're a thief! <laughs> Dive! <laughs> oh, I knew this was going to be fun. I truly thank you, thank it. you, Mark, for falling down beer. <laughs> right. No. So, so back to fanfare. I mean, yeah. it is. I mean, it, there. I mean, there are obviously other comic cons in the area. Right. What does fanfare offer that they do not? Other than location, because I mean, you are. I'm not going to lie. You're doing this right around the corner for me. I'm all in, and I'm still probably right. booking a hotel room for it because it's going to be a great weekend. <laughs> and, and, no, it's going to be a fabulous weekend. We want people who – well, first of all, we charge way less because we're not paying for these mega celebrities that come in and charge $50, $100. And, you know, so we're going to be charging a lot less because we're bringing in kind of the cooler tier actors who – you know who they are. They're available, and they want to come and meet which, you. Which is all we're ever interested Dennis, in. Anyway. Yeah. Dennis, Dennis. <laughs> we didn't care about Stan Lee. We didn't care about Shatner. We cared about Ted Stryker and Billy Zabka. Yeah. And we had a ball. No, absolutely. Guys that, Shit, I'm not going to lie. Know, we, like, and those are the people that are more approachable and more personable anyway. Those are the guys I go to when I go to other conventions, the ones that I'm allowed to, you know, of course. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we. Uh, He's we, been blacklisted just we, like us. We spent, yeah. yeah, exactly. We spent the entire weekend just hammered with Zabka, which was phenomenal from our Sweep the leg. I mean, that was uh, that was yeah. I mean, we, we got to hear all the great stories about Better Off Dead and uh, and all that. But fun Dennis, stuff. the whole point is the interaction. What are you going to go? No, see? No, it is. Lando Calrissian with his head down, signing and pushing the paper. Next, Who cares? next, Who cares? right, and trying to get you thrown out because you want him to sign a Colt forty five bottle. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, that's his agent. His agent's a total tool. <laughs> Or sitting with Ted Stryker, which was one of the funniest For minutes like of my 20 life. Minutes. Stryker, Stryker, <laughs> right? <laughs> Stryker, Stryker, Stryker. <laughs> Pinch hitting for Pedro Barboa, <laughs> Manny, Manny, Manny. Mota, Mota. Mota. <laughs> no, no, and and we want a show that's going to be the intimate experience. Bob, you know, like I said, you went to it. You've you've gone to yep. it, and and we really just you know, if you see the difference, you're going <clears> to realize that. This is what they started as. They've turned into this thing that none of us... I mean, when you go to a Comic-Con now, the artists that do comic books are they're buried in the back of the convention. The yeah. Yeah, you they're, can't they're, find them. They're second-class citizens. They are. No, they're fourth-class citizens. Dude, I, I went to San Diego once. I yeah. will never go again. There's a sliver never. of artists buried well, all off about... in the corner. Yeah, go yeah. Ahead. No, no. I mean, I go every year. There, it's it, that... Corner gets smaller and smaller every year because yeah, it's it's not a comic convention exactly. It's not. It's so the generic what TV term, shows are coming out, it, what movies are coming out, what that yeah, and great, but dude, that's a four thousand dollar weekend. Oh, it, absolutely, ain't, minimum. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> And I mean, you know, well, that's... except for Bob. Now that I know what he paid for the Sam Jones painting, Stop yeah. <laughs> and now Bo knows. <laughs> she was there with me. She knew. 
<laughs> no, so, you know, it's about that intimate experience, the paying less for it. Lots of events. We had events for girls last year. Um, I had Princess Fairy Training Camp where I had a uh, gym, gymnasium, <laughs> come in and teach the little girls to be princess fairies by teaching them exercises that they could, you know. Oh, My daughter would be all over yeah, that. Yeah, no, it, absolutely. It, we had 30 <laughs> girls. And at the end of it, Tyler Maine, who played Sabretooth in X-Men, came and awarded them all with tiaras, making them official princess fairies. That's awesome. You know, and I mean, tell me where you're going to get that experience. Because us as guys, you have three daughters, you have daughters... We don't get to take our daughters to a comic book convention and get them to enjoy something right. other than Participate the one somehow. dealer who had My Little Ponies. Exactly. Right. Yeah, see, now my yeah, that's actually my the one daughter. thing that we bought for our daughters. Yeah, there you go. But yeah. what I'm saying is my I think my daughter, daughter wears uh, Chewbacca hoodies. Well, yeah, she's a geek in the world. Yeah, yeah, she's totally yeah, like pure-blooded geek. Like She wants nothing yeah. to do with the princess stuff. It's all I about... I still don't know how she came from you. Yeah, I don't, I don't get that. <laughs> she, <laughs> milk, man. She took, the, she took the best parts of me. It must have been a recessive gene somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, no, I mean that's that is like I didn't I didn't even know that. I mean, and that's really really cool because I mean it is like I said. I mean it's right around the corner from my house, and I am I'm I'm planning on being there all weekend. Yeah, because um, it, it just it seems like it's a it's going to be a great experience. Yeah, absolutely. We have a lot of stuff. Uh, we have a lot of stuff planned, but right now the only thing we're announcing is that we have uh, Denny O'Neill, who's a comic book legend. Those of you who don't yep. know that much about comics, Al He's, Bundy. Oh, no, 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 no. He, that's Ed O'Neill. <laughs> Ed O'Neill. <laughs> Denny well, O'Neill is the guy that. who said, hey, DC, your characters are really stale, and this whole golly gee whiz thing is not really matching up to the social injustices that are going on in the U.S. Hey, let's take Green Lantern and Green Arrow and give them a reason to go out and experience the, the turmoils that were going on in Detroit, You know, where, where things were going completely crazy. Yeah, isn't the new Green Lantern from Dearborn, I think I heard somewhere? Well, one of the new Green yeah. Lanterns from Dearborn because the writer and, and the um, – a creative uh, co-creative consultant or whatever yeah. for DC is from Dearborn okay, Jeff Johns. Gotcha. So the yeah. worst movie, by the way, that they ever did with the comic books was Green Lantern. Yeah, that was actually an epic it was fail. Horrible. Horrible. It, was horrible. it was terrible. It only had one good scene, and that was the Hal. I know you little mask on your face isn't gonna. I've seen you naked, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah like, that's why. That's why I always love you. The, the entire premise of every Superman, you know, comic or movie. Oh, you know, all I need is a pair of glasses, and no one oh, will recognize what? me. <laughs> <laughs> You wish, Dave. You yeah, could take no. those glasses off right now, and no, nobody would no. recognize you. Now, yeah. what do you think, Dennis? What would you think of the new Superman reboot? Oh, God, I hated it. Really? I did really you really? Did. Why? I really I did. It. I wanted to like it. I but loved it. Why? I thought it was fantastic. It, it they lacked, finally nailed it, I No, thought. no. It lacked that heart that we got from John uh, John Ford. It was not Ford, John Ford. Oh, God, what's his name? Uh, the musician? Paul Clint. No, oh. Paul, uh, Paul Kent from the first... Christopher Reeves. Oh, one. gotcha. Yeah. Uh, whatever his name, that old actor, you know, he said, son, you were put here for a purpose. I don't know what that is yet. But that's replaced by, son, don't save kids' lives because we really don't want people to know about you. You well, know, no, and, I think that message was the same. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. No. He said, no, went, you have to hide. Different. Hide what you can do, son, because people will chastise you for having your powers. But dad, because, they would have all died if it wasn't for me. Because someone will post your shit on Instagram. That's, yeah, that's what. I mean. <laughs> well, and and that was replaced with uh, <clears throat> when Superman uh, steps outside of the uh, Superman two when he challenges the three villains to right, a fight. Yeah, right. You know, general, you step outside. He's saying step outside because all these civilians are going to get killed. Yep. Yeah. And then he goes flying off to the Fortress of Solitude. Oh, Superman's a chicken. No, he's getting them away from New York City or Metropolis yeah. so that they don't that tear up the that, entire city. Yeah, that is true. Meanwhile, that, that the, the this excess, Superman the excess is just violence. like, oh, let's just knock out all four sides of this building and let it fall down around him while I'm just slugfesting with Zod and I'm, you know... I have no concern whatsoever for these humans that I, 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 will, I will grant you that. Yeah, the, the, true. the last 20 minutes could have been cut out of that movie. I hated the Absolutely. casting for Zod, by the I'm, way. I'm pretty, oh, yeah. I'm pretty he, sure he didn't scare me. Argue no, all no. Of us. It was the guy from oh, yeah. Boardwalk Empire. <laughs> oh, dude, that's, that's the, the worst that killed casting, me. Worst casting for Zod. You didn't, you didn't like the actor no, that played awful. Zod? No, I, oh. dude, I love him. I thought it was in good. In Boardwalk Empire. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, a lot but that's of these... how that's all you see. Like I didn't, I don't watch that show, so oh. I, like my first introduction to that actor was Man of Steel. I want a little so. five foot eight skinny guy with a beard. Like that's that's Zod. Yeah, yeah. right. With like a big six foot eight guy with a, with a like, uh, forehead guy. guy with a guy. British accent. Yeah, the guy that comes right. to our events every now and then. <laughs> exactly. <right. laughs> 
<laughs> there's a guy that comes over. Yeah, yeah, he his, looks exactly yeah. like well, and you know, twin. I own a comic book store out in Taylor, and you know, we we get all of the guys like you that. You know, you just you don't read the comics, but you hey, you saw the movie, you want to come in uh, and see. I got we're the sounding. Comics. Per- oh, very good. <laughs> but we're like the cultural you know sounding. I, board. You know what I bought this shiny happy Uh-oh, asshole? What? what? He was the best man in my wedding. Oh, go, go ahead, tell him what I got you for the best man gift. What did he get you? The uh, uh, Superman uh, movie poster from Mylar. Mylar, 1978, uh, si- signed by the entire cast. Really? <laughs> I don't even think Jay Towers has one of those. Dude, it, it took me like six, I, uh, for six years I was going to his house. Did you get that framed yet? <laughs> yeah. Seriously, have you got that framed yet? <laughs> See, now that's why you have Dave as a good friend. He got me yeah. for housewarming yeah. the Caddyshack movie poster signed by the cast, except for uh, Ted Knight, and I think that was it. Yeah, because well, he's, he's already he's dead. 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 Yeah. 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 Not much I could do about that one. Well, yeah. no, <laughs> Dan- and no <laughs> Danny Noonan. <laughs> no, 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 yeah. Noonan. Yeah, he's on Homeland now. It's ridiculous yeah, no. watching yeah. it. Is he really? Yeah, anyway. but yeah, no. I mean, it, totally it's, it's all about being that cultural sounding board. I mean, there's yeah. 999 people that haven't read a comic book that see every one of these things for every one of us. Yeah, for every one of the real geeks, you know, there's 999. We either have to figure out how to a deal with that because we are the minority at this point. Yeah. You know, and let's welcome everyone in and then show them, you know, you thought Man of Steel was a great movie. That's great. Yeah. But the geeks that I saw on a day-to-day I basis a, after I, that was I, like, oh, my God, did you see that steaming pile of horse crap that they, <laughs> they put on screen? I All know, right, well, dude. See, but, the but Dennis, so, so I, I'm comparing Man of Steel to Superman Returns. Well, you can compare a turd to diarrhea, but they're both <laughs> crap. You know? Dennis, I think, honestly... I think you know, I'm crowd, just not going to argue with them at all. Have, <laughs> you could have asked them to write the movie, and they'd still say it was a piece of crap. I'm convinced yeah. that crowd wouldn't have been happy if Jenna Jameson was on their knees before them while they're watching the movie, <laughs> no. but kneeling before Zod. And, 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 <laughs> wrong, and, and Wolfgang Puck was feeding them. You're wrong. And they'd be like, I hate this movie. It's stupid. All of the Iron Man movies and the Marvel Cinematic <laughs> Universe is matching up almost perfectly to some aspect of the yeah, comic book. Can't true. they deviate, though? Can, 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 they, can they not deviate from the comic no, book? No, they so, can totally They totally deviate. There, there's right. absolute deviations, but so it's what how you deviate. That, by and large, the comic universe is equivalent to the Yelp. Yep. Oh, totally up here. <laughs> oh, and I actually, hey, that segues nicely into uh, the power struggle of geek versus jock going uh, on. Which was out. Dude, I loved watching that play. Oh, did you I like that? Literally. Wasn't that beautiful? I don't even know if you guys were paying attention to this, but so Dennis paying posted. Attention? Paying attention to this. So Dennis had posted something out about, uh, and actually it was a comic store that showed up at Motor City Comic Con that we had talked to. Um, and they had a parking lot. Nostalgia Inc. in, yeah. uh, can we Jackson. plug them? In yeah, Jackson. Absolutely plug yeah. them. Um, we, they, New owner just purchased it from the old owner. Yeah. And so he's, the, the place has been there for 20 some years. Yeah. So they had a parking lot out behind the building that was like, you know, a sort of a common shared, you know, parking lot that they okay. had a, a gentleman's handshake agreement that everybody could use and life was good. Sure. Well, in comes basically this pole dancing class. Fantastic. Um, that took over the gym that was the or took over the building and made it a, a gym uh, and decided to be jackholes. And while all the people were po- or all the people were parked at, you know, shopping at the comic book store, they came in and started hammering in and like zip tying on no parking will be towed signs. What? And brought these like. There's no other way to put this asshole <laughs> tow truck drivers in that were, you know, trying to block people in and tow them out of their parking lot. And they literally pinned a, a 19 two. and 20 year yeah. old two up kids against their car. They literally and forced their them cars. To, and forced them to give over their credit cards where they were going to yank their car. What? How's that legal? Uh, exactly. <clears throat> so and this was going unnoticed and like so you know Dennis you know posted about it and I'm like dude let's absolutely you're coming on the show in like four <laughs> days let's yeah. bring this up yeah. and like pressure grew and doing and pressure grew within and- 24 hours of literally hammering this tow truck company's facebook page and their Yelp reviews. Just shaming them. I mean, oh, it absolute out, dude, it was, obliteration. Yeah. It was they went from four and a half fake stars, which you could link <laughs> back to friends of the people who own the company, of course. to 1.7. Oh, it was epic. I mean, it was just... Wait, a tow truck company had a Facebook page? Yes. Everyone has a Facebook and page. And their Yelp. They had a Yelp, too. But doesn't everyone hate 
tow truck. Companies. They do. That's why it's odd that they had five five star reviews Until you need for people them. that were all the tow friends. truck company. Yeah. Yeah. The tow truck company wouldn't make me take eggs right. when they towed my car. I hate them. Yeah, they did not have free beer. I don't understand. Stupid Yelp people. I hate you all. <laughs> Except for the geeks that fought back against them. And, I, and dude, I'm not gonna lie. Watching the dismantling of these people. On Behold the power of social media. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Dude, the Behold geek, the geek shall inherit the earth, man. I absolutely. Mean, that's what it comes down to because like you with, all work for and, us. And then it was less than 24 hours after that where the owner of the company, yeah, issued a public apology and, and refunded and the two refunds kids were issued. <laughs> You've never seen a refund from a tow truck company. Yeah, no, you never. Seen their no, you don't see a guy with a Rottweiler and a shotgun. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean it, that was that was actually a really good. I mean, and that's one of the things that I think like it's as, as it's much a double edged sword. Well, it's and definitely people a love it, hate sword. it, whatever. But I mean, like the the geek nomenclature and the geek stereotype and the geek culture, like it's it's okay now. Like it's it's okay to be a geek now, right? And, and it's it, it, Revenge of the Nerds changed everything. Yep. Well, no, I, I say no. this all the time. No, you know, yes. there was, it, no, I remember it still making... wasn't okay to be a geek when that movie came out. No. <laughs> After after Shaq got the Superman the, right, tattoo, and let's be honest, the, a lot of jocks uh, got yeah, those yeah. Superman tattoos. The major theme in that movie That's was true, just Dennis. incredibly rapey and weird. And let's just let's be honest, All right? You oh, put a yourself moon in a, bounce. Put, oh, yeah, right. put yourself in a Darth Vader mask and pretend to be somebody else and nail some chicken a moon bounce. Yeah, that's a great message to send to geeks. A bunch of water. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you should, wait, you're saying I shouldn't have been watching that at 12 years old? Right. Yeah, that's yeah, that's Amp the high. Yeah. Amp high. Yeah, a little little rapey and creepy. Let's let's be clear. <laughs> Absolutely. That wasn't cut out on the version that I saw. That was looking well, at my well, we are, we are in the yeah. industrial center. Right. <laughs> that was looking at my mother. Yeah, have you seen the six level? Yeah, that's yeah. probably being refilmed four doors so, down. Let's Dennis, let me ask let me ask you yeah. a question. <laughs> One of the things I hate about going to the cons and getting the autograph and standing in the line is when the guys are complete let me just just a douche dude. Yeah, total dick. Right? And, and no, there's know, plenty of them out there. I used to rep. I used Billy to D. Rep. Williams, Colt forty five. No, Billy yeah. D was just like not. He wasn't even. He was like a puppy. He, he tried was, to get me thrown out of Motor City Comic. No, he was. Yeah. Funny. He, he, he did, did or his manager. It was Tall, his attitude guy. that started it. Yeah, it's okay. So Dennis, let me give you an example. Like Carrie Elwes, who was. Uh, as you, yeah, exactly. you know, I, yeah. I'm reluctant to because I I no longer can go to a certain convention in the right. Motor City because I put on a competing okay. show. So I I give really didn't get to meet most this of these Russia. guys. This no, Russia, 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 uh, apparently. So yeah. give you no. Hold on, give me another example. So wait, how does that work? You're I can tell you. Well, it doesn't matter. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, seriously, out. seriously, they they. Li- I was literally there in 2010. They found out that my show, Detroit Fanfare, was coming. October 2010, and I showed up to one of their little shows, and they're they're like, Dennis, you are no longer welcome here or at any of our events. No, see, we've seen security at these events. No, yeah, no, no, trust I, me, I could I could go in if yeah. I wanted to, but yeah. <laughs> it's like I don't. I mean, they're wearing a yellow jacket. <laughs> but here's my thing: like we, the Revenge of the Nerds, they had Booger, Skolnick, and Takashi. Yeah, yes. right. Uh, Booger, how were they? How were they? Booger no, was this, one of the nicest. This, this was, was epic. And he's, this, this he's was from epic. Michigan. He's from yeah. Michigan. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No. My buddy but I've heard like Carradine is a total jerk. Dick. What dick. a dick. dick. He's an absolute yeah. dick. dick. Yeah. Takashi, no, no, no. Takashi would have came home and had dinner do? with me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what else is he going to do? Um, Booker was, he like, asked what else is Booker he was do? so nice. <laughs> yes, I'll say hair pie for a dollar. Here you go. Carradine was such a dick. No, I've heard it. Like, I've heard it. Yeah. Why come out here? You fly out here. Yep. You stay in a hotel. Make the most of it. Absolutely. Dude, Curtis Armstrong would have hung out with us. Oh, my God. Like I said, dude, Zabka. Zabka literally. Best, he, he, he didn't want to yeah. leave, dude. Best story of that entire weekend for us. I'm not gonna lie. Was so we're hanging out in the bar with Zabka. We're drinking. We're doing shots and having a grand, grand old time. And you okay? Somebody ran. I drank the wrong cup. It was the whiskey one, not the beer one. <laughs> no, oh, I did that a minute ago, but I coughed oh, off. No, oh, is that why you were coughing too? Okay, nice. I'm like Jesus. Yeah, it's like oh, I drink well, whiskey. You asked like Dennis to bring <laughs> booze up. I bring good booze. We're all drinking Knob Creek like it's a beer for crying out loud. <laughs> Wasn't it so Cheers. Like, like random Whoops, guy shows cup. up. <laughs> random guy shows up. Taps Zabka on the shoulder and says, "Hey, Billy, we gotta leave. It's time to go." And he looks. He says, "Man, I'm having fun. These guys are great. We're drinking beer. Yeah. Get out of here." Jason Momoa. Comes up, tap, taps Billy on the shoulder. Billy, we got to go. It's, we're going to head up to the room. He's like, man, I'm having a good time. Get out of here. right? Get, get. Were they going up to the room? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Brittany Daniel walks up, says, Billy, we're going to go up to the room. No, no, no. Guys, she rubs her hand through his hair. Yeah, exactly. She just said Billy. <laughs> Guys, it's been fun. I got to go. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 
But you can understand that last oh, one. Oh, yeah. yeah, we were like, did we understand our place in the hierarchy yeah, of exactly. life? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, she, she, she's talking to me, and she goes, we're thinking about going to dinner tonight. Where should we go? And I just look at her, I'm like, oh, with exception to like two guests that I had in the five years we've been putting on Fanfare, with the exception of those two, I know almost all of these guys personally at yeah. some level, you know, from the convention circuits. So I won't bring assholes yeah. to fanfare. But why I, are they like that? It's just There like, are just people that are like that. And guess what? They only care about the money. And uh, there's a whole lot of people So they who get their just, guaranteed return and they don't care. Yeah, exactly. exactly. The coolest one was Dirk Benedict. I'm not going to lie. Oh, oh, Dirk's oh. awesome. Oh, Dude, my that God. Was so he survived epic. testicular, uh, you know, testicular yeah. cancer, yeah. for Christ's sakes. I mean... Yeah, that'll change your entire li- look outlook on life forever. Dude, I yeah. had- he told me to call his hotel room, <laughs> like to call because I was DJing across the street at the post. Yeah, like, and he goes, just call me at the place, and we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll send a driver for you. Everything. And I told the manager, I go, face is coming from eight team, so everybody's prepping. <laughs> They're all excited. And They're like, Bob. He's not here, so I call the room and I'm like, um, "Mr. Benedict, first name Dirk." And they actually rang me through, and you just hear the most loudest, like, just screaming and yelling and clanging and hitting wood. I'm like, "Hey, it's Bob. You're supposed to be at the bar across the street." And he just mumbles some incoherent and hangs up the phone like 37 times. And I'm like, "Yeah, no, he's not coming." <laughs> yeah, that's not be happening. But no, well, and, and the year before, I took him down to City Club, which was outstanding. Oh, I, oh, I, I, oh my god. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> That's those are my favorite people too. It's like I was the but, you puppeteer know, for the the robot you didn't see. Dude, in dude the that was the best home. part. Is so I'm hanging. Out, so it was uh, it was Dirk Benedict and it was uh, uh, oh my god I'm totally blanking on her name. Uh, the green chick Ula. Why am I blanking on her name? Oh, Femi Taylor. Yes, thank you. I used to rep her. And then the... She's uh, awesome. What did you do to her? (laughs) I used to be her rep. Uh, Oh, oh, EP. EP. Big difference. Oh, (laughs) shout out to Femi Taylor. I'll tag her. Dude, oh, she was outstanding. She's awesome. She uh, she was so much fun. And then uh, I always... uh, The Red Hair. That was the other... The dancer in the special editions that was there hanging out uh, for that one. You see Boba Fett with the mask I I actually used to rep her, too, but... uh, And then a couple other folks. And we all did. We all went to... And so... We all went, like, hung out. I got a limo. We were chilling. We were just having a grand old time. Went bar hopping. Went down to City Club. The guy who was the biggest jerk was the guy who lived in inside... Boba Fett? No, the guy who li- No, dude, Jeremy Bullock was awesome. He he was outstanding. Um, but the guy who lived inside the Newt Gunray costume was... And I'm like, dude... Can no, you blame him? I'm like, I'm like, dude, nobody even knows who the hell you are. Right? Like, you were, you were a life-size <laughs> Muppet. Why are you... <laughs> It's like a, it's like like a Jawa like, getting pissed off for not having a FaceTime. Do you know who I am? I was the right arm of Jabba the Hutt. Yeah. It's <laughs> like, <laughs> so get out it of was, here. It was, it was disappointing. Hey, we, yeah. uh, we got to do well, a break real quick, Dennis. Sorry. We'll do oh, no problem. No problem. No, no, we wait, wait, wait. Is that me saying that? Yes. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll be back with Dennis from Detroit Fanfare. This is the IT in the D show. We'll be right. IT in the D. Read. Meet. Listen. Networking Detroit. One beer at a time. This is Robert Hayes, a Ted Stryker to my mother. When I'm not hanging out at the Magumbo Bar, I'm listening to the IT and the D show. It's worse than Detroit. The IT and the D show is brought to you in part by Logicalis. Logicalis is an international IT solutions and managed services provider with expertise in communications and collaboration, data center, and cloud services. Employing nearly 3,700 people worldwide with more than 20 offices in the U.S., including two in Metro Detroit. Find out more at us.logicalis.com. This is a previously recorded episode of the IT in the D Show. The IT in the D Show is brought to you in part by Quantum. A word from Quantum, a storage company with a different approach. Quantum offers industry-leading backup and DR solutions with products that integrate innovative deduplication, replication, and cloud technologies. Our archive solutions help you retain data longer and keep it accessible, leveraging technologies like direct object storage, intelligent tiering, and LTO. Quantum Scale-Out Storage is designed to accelerate complex information workflow. Powered by StoreNext 5, it is the industry's fastest streaming file system. Visit www.quantum.com for more information. 
mean, so know, we are back. Segment yeah, four. I mean, you yeah. can say that. Wait. Episode sixty six. <laughs> This is the IT that, that, show. That's not We're in the Raw that. Radio X studios in the Russell Industrial Center, beautiful Midtown Detroit, Michigan. During the break, um, unbeknownst to all of us, Dave and Dennis went downstairs. And they found a uh, pastor and they got married. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Yeah, and then yeah. and then it was overturned by. I'm, so, so, so I'm actually. Court. I'm not they, surprised that there's a pastor in the Russell Industrial. Center. <laughs> so now we introduce the new Mister and Mister. <laughs> Dave besties. And Dennis. We're besties again, <laughs> dude. It's hol- like seriously. I like I. I you know. You Worlds know, are colliding. You know my rule. I have to meet people three times before it sticks. And so we like, and we were we What's were just, we met each other then. We met each other Friday, right. and it wasn't until today. And so, dude, when will they we're, 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 we're on we're number two right now? And I'm like, Holy see, shit. back then I didn't wear a hat. Yep. I, had, I had the spiked hair. I had the uh, giant flaring Hawaiian yep. shirts. Yeah, and that was my look then because yep. I was uh, the that's Jerry look, Maguire. Wait, wait, that's Dave's look now. Yes, exactly. I haven't changed. But much. I, they that's called funny. me the Jerry Maguire of Star Wars because I gave every one of my clients that personal touch. Yeah, and hey, not that hey. comics has no HR uh, department either. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Erica, although if Erica's looking for another gig. <laughs> Well, apparently she publishes websites. Yeah, other than helping you get it up, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> Did she get your website up? She got the website up. So I was unable to get my website up. <laughs> and then halfway through the IT and the D show. If you Perfect. log into Viagra.com first <laughs> she, and then go to it. She if does, you go to Viagra.com and then Apprend.org. She does her best work with us. She really, truly does. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> True Welcome story. to the fourth segment, everyone. It's <laughs> a four-hour election. <laughs> it's the same as the second segment, but way drunker. Right. Yes, exactly. So, no, and, and, and we didn't hit on, though, Dennis. So, like, where do people find Wonder World Comics? Well, Wonder World Comics is WonderWorldComics.com. Uh, we have a portal there. That'll lead you to Wonder World Comics, our Amazon store, yep. Wonder World Comics slash Amazon. 50,000 items that we ship worldwide. And then you go over to... Uh, Fanfare. Fanfare. That's Detroit Fanfare, spelled F-A-N-F-A-R-E, different from the original convention right. 50 years ago, uh, .com. And that'll give you all the fanfare info uh, as we start rolling it out over the next three months. So, and I'm not going to lie, like, so... Uh, we we're, we're broadcasting live, Dave, from the, for fanfare. We are, and so... Well, and Absolutely. Here's, well, and here's one of the other things we were talking about is... We're going to make that happen? Well, yeah. So, here's one of the other things we were talking about is, you know, he said, you know, so I've got a warehouse full of toys, and you have what? an you what? Have a, and you have well, an what? I happen to hear you guys were you, doing you have a an event toy in December. Drive. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> so Dennis stepped up and said he's gonna yeah get us hooked absolutely. Up and I've got stop hundreds so wait, of Hot Wheels cars, action figures. Menachem, are you listening? Menachem, so, <laughs> yeah. I think no, Menachem's gonna have a heart attack. <laughs> we're gonna come over to the, your event at uh, what's the Falling, Falling Down, Down Beer Falling Down yes. Beer Company, and we're gonna dump a, a van load of toys on you guys. Oh my god! So yeah. Insane. That's, That's going to awesome. be awesome. Yeah, yeah WonderWorldComics.com. Wonderworld CMX, I think, on Twitter, but I don't know how to use Twitter. So I, I told him. No well, one does. We're, yeah, exactly. we're, we're going we're gonna to get all the nerds at his We'll definitely have a Twitter, do. how to how to Twitter class at a friend. There we go. I'll be there. <laughs> yeah, I'll take, I'll take I'll that. Take it, it, lasts, yeah. it lasts three years, and you have no idea what happened when you left. <laughs> <laughs> I still have my MySpace account. Uh, uh, oh, you should yeah. delete. I, oh, so wait, wait. So I, you're, I don't know how to log into it, let alone delete it. Dude, I scrolled far enough back in my Facebook timeline that I wound up on MySpace, <laughs> <laughs> and Tom was still there. Are we still, still friends? Still Are we still friend? friends? Yes. Is the your MySpace profile somewhere between the last time you t- you Facebooked and then being born? Is that like yeah? That's yeah. It? yeah. It's like born. MySpace. No, no, Friendster. Join Facebook. Friendster oh, yeah, MySpace. Friendster. Don't forget about Friendster. Don't forget oh, about Friendster. Yeah, yeah. It was that was like, what, for Friendster. like two weeks? I liked Friendster. Oh, I, you're, I, you're the one. You're single-handedly trying to bring it back. You <laughs> truly are. I want to. <laughs> it's still better than LO. It is. <laughs> <laughs> my Tumblr page is better than LO. <laughs> I think there's like one picture of my kids on my Tumblr. Somebody page. was like, "You kept, you have to use Tumblr. You have to use Tumblr." I'm like, uh, it's, "There's nothing there. It's T U M B L E R. I can't find it." My, my you know what's on Tumblr right now? Porn. <laughs> Porn. My ten year old wants her own YouTube channel, and I'm like, "No, no, no. no. please don't." My no. kids, my kids want their own YouTube channel. You know what she well. wants for Christmas? Like the T-shirt 
of a guy that does like Minecraft review. Oh my like, god, my uh, son my son spends more time watching videos of people playing yeah. Minecraft than he does play playing it. Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, we have what to is this? Yeah, we talked about that a couple episodes ago. It's oh ridiculous. Oh my god. Yeah. You're, you're, not, you're not school. alone. You're he not gets alone. home from school, turns on the computer, watches two hours of yeah. Minecraft, yeah. and then I'm like, okay, you're going to play Minecraft now? No, 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 I'm gonna go. No, I got my fix. Yeah, I got. Yeah, I'm good. I don't have to I, do. I, any, I, I, don't have to, I don't have to do anything. Watching. He built a building. He fought some um, zombies, and yeah, he's good. We're so good. we've we've already had our our little Star Wars love fest, but I, I feel like I I would be remiss if I didn't point out that this is a momentous day in Star Wars history because on this day in 1978. The Star Wars Holiday Special premiered. This is where we're actually introduced to Boba Fett for the first time. <laughs> yes, and the uh, Wookiee Holiday, and yeah. uh, that was yeah. terrible. and Carrie that Fisher's was Carrie Fisher's fabulous singing voice before <laughs> before four packs of cigarettes a day. Carrie Fisher came along. You know, for as terrible as it was, I'll oh. never. Uh, can I you know, tell a story? Be in bad light for introducing uh, us to Boba Fett. Can I tell a story I've never told? Done. Oh, you please do. do. No, no, don't no, do that no, here no. on our show. No, no. And, and we're done. Oh, oh, oh this will be good. This is actually nobody knows this story. Um, Star Wars Celebration Two. I had all my clients okay. there. This was in Indianapolis, and <clears throat> Carrie Fisher was going to show up. It's one of the first events that she'd done. So I'm like, oh great, I I got all access passes. I got the little lanyard that lets me right. go anywhere. So the morning Carrie signing, me and my partner Bob. We go in, and we're like, oh, we're first in line. We're like fourth in line. And we're like, okay, we're going to get our Carrie Fisher autographs. We're going to make a fortune on these and blah, blah, blah. And so Carrie's assistant's there, and Carrie will be out in a few minutes. And fabulous. Carrie comes out absolutely wasted. I was just going to ask you, was she, so, was she sober? I mean, it's, it's 10 a.m. in the morning, and she is oh three God. sheets to the freaking wind. And God we're like, I'm so yeah. sad I did so not bring my flask with me tonight. Yeah, we're in the Indianapolis <laughs> you Convention didn't, you didn't Center. Need to. <laughs> <laughs> I actually have a flask that is inscribed. It says three sheets to the wind" on it. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, you never get hey. that chance twice. I'm what? sorry. Hey. I, wait, I, I feel like I, did Erica not prep you for our show? Like, did yeah. she tell you nothing? About <laughs> no, 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 she definitely did. That's why I poured <laughs> myself another glass of whiskey. Yeah, yeah. Dave, you want to be? I don't know what he's it's preparing 7 for. Seven o'clock in the morning. Scotch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm exactly. preparing for tomorrow. morning. Morning. Right. So, so in runs in walks Carrie, and she's like, "Hi everyone, hi." And we're, because she's drunk, she's wasted. And so Carrie sits down, and her assistant's helping the two people in front of us. Carrie is just sitting there, and she go all of a sudden. Carrie like reaches under the table, and she starts doing something. She's like wiggling her ass. And she's, you know, we're, and I'm just what? watching it. It's Was she wearing crap. a sleep girl outfit? No, she's wearing like a full one piece dress. She crapped her pants. Is this about <laughs> no, a she literally PG thirteen takes off her pantyhose and throws them on the table. I'm not wearing what? these. Get out I of am here. not wearing these all day long. These Get. are already bothering me. Get then, out of here. No, so her assistant sees. <laughs> now see, that's the Carrie's, side of life that you want to see. Carrie's sweaty, nasty pantyhose all bunched up on the table uh, on top of all of the pictures that she's going to sign. <laughs> wait, 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 sweaty and nasty at 10 a.m.? Yeah. Can well, you get those signed? Yeah, and all yeah. I can think is, how much would these go for on eBay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that all the nerds are like yeah. beating each other. Oh, it's like God. 16 candles. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> and and so her assistant freshman? sees. Yeah, freshman. Give me a dollar. Do you know how many floppy dips, discs you can buy for it? <laughs> yeah, do you so, know anything about floppy disks? Yeah. A female so, exercise. So her <laughs> assistant sees her throw the pantyhose up there, and she's like, Carrie grabs the pantyhose, throws them underneath the, the table, and Carrie's just got this, like, no, I don't know where planet I'm on. She pulls out a cigarette in the middle of the convention center attached to Colt Stadium, and even Indiana, that wasn't cool. Right. Lights up a cigarette, 10 in the morning, and starts smoking the cigarette with one hand. Her other hand is holding her chin up while she's doing this. Hi. Okay, awesome. Uh, See it now? now right right now, at this very moment, I wish we had video. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> if we had only had the technology to have a camera phone just kind of sitting down, that would be like total YouTube gold. Like right. Great. So I could have retired off the YouTube. But I have to say, <laughs> I love Carrie. I've met her several times, and I've seen pictures and videos well, of her and lately. She owns it herself. She looks amazing now. She's yeah, she totally does. pulled it back. They've done miracles to like get her into this new movie, dude. Her and one woman stand up is hilarious. Oh, I know, I know. That's like the great the, the whole, her whole <laughs> shtick about the. Uh, like finding out that there were Princess Leia sex dolls yeah. was outstanding. 
outstanding. You know, and it, it's what? You know, I you, damn near fell off. Dude, have you ever seen? You've never seen Carrie Fisher's one woman like her stand up shtick. It's so bad. It's I, it's dude, but it's. It's so awesome. It's, you gotta watch it, but it's like, her, like her, her, s- s- self, she's like making fun well, of herself. Oh, absolutely. She was yeah. celibate yeah. for so six much. years because she didn't want to give any man the satisfaction of having sex with Princess Leia. Yeah. yeah. Like, you know, seriously. That, yeah. Yeah. But no, like one of her like... Well, it's probably very similar to why Mark Hamill like checked out and didn't want to have anything to do with Star Wars for the longest time, right? Well, well like one of her... About it. Well, well, that one of her the failure trip. of Corvette Summer and the night the lights went out in Georgia. But other than those two <laughs> facts... Other than that... What's yeah. wrong with Corvette Summer? Yeah, Corvette Summer was hilarious. <laughs> uh, so many things. <laughs> <laughs> but no, what, so one of the things she was talking about was like her like freakiest moment of realization was when the, like somebody had licensed out her likeness to make sex dolls. I did hear that. <laughs> How does she feel about the plus 200 pound girls that wear the Princess Leia bikini at, at the at oh, cos- like cosplay? Oh, that. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. There, there, should be a, there should be a law against that. I, I'm sure that was my also a no spat, comment. There is a dark side of Yeah, my friend cons, Spat actually wore the Slave Leia costume. <laughs> it, he's a guy. He's a dude. Uh, actually wore it at Mardi Gras. It was the biggest hit. A big, hairy, well, the Turkish that's... dude wearing a Slave Leia costume at Mardi Gras. <laughs> Turkish, Turkish. Yeah, he's he's a big, hairy Turkish dude. <laughs> Need Jabba no Bata. Jabba? Oh, oh, oh. Jabba. Say, Jabba. Need Jabba no Bata? Need Jabba no Bata. Uta Guta Solo? So, uh, all right, what what happened? I think Dave. I think we just got way too. I would love to. I would love to have Carrie Fisher's opinion on that whole Princess Leia walking in Manhattan for ten hours. She should call oh, in dude, right that was, now. That was epic. I'm not going to lie. Did you see that, Dennis? No, I haven't. What? You know what I'm talking about? The yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, so someone did a Princess Leia walking in Manhattan for ten oh hours. Not only God. that, so they found like. Stormtroopers and everybody else. They actually yeah. had like they and they did the sound bites from all the movies. So like they have oh people dressed up in Jawas. I see that. And and like the, I the, thought I was like on the top oh, I, level for I will, all no, about no, no. that. I'll shoot that so, yeah. so, so the best part about that was like in the original uh, video where the 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 girls walking through and the guy was walking next to her silently for ten minutes. You know, ten minutes later, yeah. nothing. Ten minutes later, yeah. nothing. Well, in the Princess Leia one, it's Boba Fett walking next to her for ten minutes. <laughs> And then there's uh, uh, Indiana Jones. There needs out. to be a new internet rule. Whatever the porn rule is, what's, what's the porn rule? Anything on the internet has a porn. Oh, absolutely. Whatever oh. the the rule is, right. somebody will Twitter it. But there needs to be a porn rule for anything that's out there. There's a Star Wars parody of it. Oh yeah. Oh, there usually is because we right. had the all about the base and this and that's like right Dude, on top. All of about each other. the base. Oh, the no all rebels. about the base was fantastic. Yeah. It destroyed me. Yeah. No, it was amazing. And they're like, oh, how dare you have skinny. Cute girls in the it was, defeats the entire purpose of the original song. No, it's funny because well, no Wars. one expects a Twitter. So here's, Twitter here's everyone Twitter. will complain about anything. That's but the another the, rule. That's the rule that comes right after the Star Wars rule. The Yelp rule. Yeah, right. but no. So here's, <laughs> but here's what that here's what that did for like for my life though. So like my kid, dude, I have a five year old son, and listening to him sing because he loves the song all about that bass. <laughs> listening to him sing it. Oh my god, is one of the funniest things you will ever hear in your life. But it's uh, a matter him, of... No, hand me one of the Dead World sodas there. That wasn't actually a plug, but yeah, there you go. Yes. Dead World uh, soda so meaning beer? He, Cheap plug. Uh, uh, no, yeah. So he, like, he sings all about that bass, no trouble, because he doesn't... Yeah. I mean, he's five. He doesn't get <laughs> yeah, bass, he doesn't get treble, treble. He doesn't get it. But I play the Star Wars parody for him. And his no rebel, uh, uh, no rebel. Oh, now he gets it, it, and now he sings the song right. That's awesome. <laughs> and and Disney makes another nickel. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. They, get, they get another four cents. Like, yeah. 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 It's all right. I own stock in them. That's you're making me richer. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are coming out with a new beer called Luke. I am your lager. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be yeah. Because we're, we're gonna get sued. I actually, Mark, went to, <clears throat> I was Mark, on are tour. You listening? Yes, I was on tour in Japan. Uh, with the Star Wars actors, and we were huge. talking about in Japan. Um, oh, it's ama- it was as huge as you, I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, you, you, you're you're six inches taller than everything in there except for the sumo oh, yeah. wrestlers. And goddamn, there was actually <laughs> a winery, a Japanese winery, that was making Star Wars character bottle of wine. So we have a, I have a Boba Fett bottle of wine. I have a Mara oh Jade God. bottle of wine. Well, did you see this? Uh, there was a story Boba last Fett week. Wine. Yes. That Lucasfilm. <laughs> Boba Fett don't wine. <laughs> Lucasfilm is suing a brewery because uh, there was Empire Brewing and the, the Empire, Empire Strikes, Strikes Bach. Bach. 
because they tried to trademark it. If they didn't try to trademark it, they would have been fine. They've been running for a while. Yeah. So I said, we got to get Falling Down to make Luke, I am your lager. <laughs> <laughs> the problem is he doesn't make lagers because it takes too long to store. <laughs> we'll figure something out. Lucas wins again. I know. No, we were trying to think of beer names for Star Wars, and it's just that one. Yeah, really no, that's perfect. Stout. Like, I don't have nothing. Like, uh, I don't know. Exactly. I got nothing. Exactly. Dead air. No. Crickets. Crickets. Where's the crickets? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't have that sound drop. Yeah. So, I, all right. So what haven't Sorry. we hit on yet that we should? I mean, that's that, this is what the fourth segment is for. Is the uh, Rob Cup again. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll Do we need a, a sharpie marker? <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know. So, like, I, you know, I, oh, we've got the websites. So, when uh, we've talked about it in generic terms, but when exactly is fanfare happening? Oh, uh, February sixth, seventh, and eighth at the Best Western Sterling Inn in Sterling Heights at fifteen and uh, what is oh, that? Which is where the Dead World. That's where the Dead. Was. That yes. we're going to use that entire convention center. Wait, when will then be now? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because we're looking at now, sir. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to book the remote unit. Well, hey, I'll, I'll get a plug yeah. out. I'm actually selling right now on eBay the Darth. Dude, he. Is... Uh, no, wait, 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 oh, uh... Bob. So our who who hates us? Everybody. No, no. <laughs> but who who hates us that makes us laugh that they hate us? Quicken, quicken. <laughs> no, okay. Who Less hate, powerful. Who, who hates us that's in our demographic that we laugh about? Oh, the stupid Quicken. stormtrooper assholes? Right. Oh, yeah. So And so we're going to create the... 502nd. 502nd. Well, we already talked about this at the bar. But so he is currently auctioning off... Yeah, we already talked about this. We did. We did. The dark helmet, pith helmet, worn by Rick Moranis. It's a safari one, though, for the desert. It's a safari yeah. one, though. It's, it's a like safari one. It's like 5Gs. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's... It, he it's 8,000. 8,000. Eight. Eight yeah. I took it on Comic Book Men, Kevin Smith's show. That and, shit ain't yeah. cheap. No. No. But it's the screen used uh, pith helmet. But we, I, I know some people. We can make some calls. We ain't found shit. The 502nd five oh, <laughs> five oh will rise. <laughs> the five, it's all about the 502nd. Oh no, Surrounded gotta, by assholes. We got to find somebody that uh, make the 3D helmets for us for the space yeah. balls. We know 3D printer guys. I know, we, yeah. I know, we know enough now. We, we get Mike, to reach, we'll get Mike back in here. Yeah. Or just buy really big ping pong balls. Right. Just cut yeah. the front. Cut the front, yeah. Yeah. Because that's us, arts and crafts. Yeah. <laughs> Lots of room for activities. Just put the daughters on it. Right. That's right. Yeah, honey, make daddy a helmet. <laughs> so do we go to the websites, all that good stuff? DetroitFanfare.com. DetroitFanfare.com. Right. And uh, Wonder World I think we got to cut this show off. Like Alan's looking for more beer in the cooler. <laughs> Alan is digging out, like, <laughs> digging deep in the cooler. Erica, we're just going to apologize now. I, I cannot <laughs> wait to meet Erica. <laughs> We love Erica. We really, really do. I mean, I was looking for more of this uh, vitamin water stuff, like the non-booze. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you drank my vitamin water? Would you, you, would you like a Dead World? Would that wasn't like a Dead World that wasn't premium vitamin zombie? Water. Yeah, would you like a Dead World premium zombie Yeah, that's beverage? actually, that's yeah, that's non-alcoholic. Root beer, cream soda, Wait, strawberry. non-alcoholic beer? That's, no, that's it's not root alcohol. beer. No, soda. Soda. Soda with a T. What's uh, soda? Okay, then yes. Dead World Premium Zombie right. Soda right well, there. Thanks to Falling Down Beer and Knob Creek. Um, we got to end this, sto- this show. Yeah. The stow? Yeah. We, we got to stow. I, we got to stow away the stow. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I'm. I'm. Can we? Can we? You're welcome, gentlemen. I have I, gotten the I T and the D the drunkest they've been. I think. No. 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 Damn it. Absolutely. No. But you know no. what? That's a challenge. You can come back not. anytime. I will come back. You know what? Yes. Bob challenge. Can we leave the moonshine in the accepted. box. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Although, can we can we raise a raise our glasses to Glennie Larson? Who passed away? Oh, you know what? absolutely. We, we did not. Lenny Larson. We we didn't hit any of the topics I, know, that I had written down. But Lenny that's Larson, we, the guy behind most Battle of the Star shows Galactica. that I grew up with. Quincy, Fall Guy, so many others, and not only him, dude. R. A. Armstrong, Battlestar Galactica, Airwolf, Rider, all of them. Knight Rider, R. A. Armstrong. Choose your own adventure. He was yeah. The, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm I gonna keep my thumb one. on that how page. Did he, how did he not keep his thumb on the prior page? <laughs> 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 He kept his thumb on the eulogy. He's toast. Uh, toast. Toast. Yeah. Tip of 40 remembers. In memoriam. Yep. Prost. Right. Prost. Always. Prost. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. That was sad seeing that Glenn Larson and, and I still to this day, and no one under the age of 30 will get this joke or get this reference, but I still wonder who Christian 1 and Nye by 2 are. I truly, truly do. Dave, you can, you can be over 30 and still not get that joke. 
I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get really? it. You never watched Battlestar Galactica? I, I remember. The, the I... end credits, it was always in association with Christian 1, Roman numeral, NYBY 2, Roman numeral. I don't, if only I don't there remember was a thing, that. Thing, yeah. If only there was a source to find out what that was... Right. I don't like, want to know. You know <laughs> so I we no- can't we can't cure at your bowl, but I'm sure somebody has a Wikipedia page for that answer. Right. That uh, yeah, that will answer who that is. Right. So I have no idea what you're talking about, but in the meantime, apprend.org went live. <laughs> <laughs> did Erica get, get it up? Wait, 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 wait. wait. Did Erica back. get wait, wait. it up? Give a- Erica got it up. Guys, guys, wait. guys, I gotta tell what? you. Hold on. <laughs> we can do the slow clap. That's fine. I couldn't figure it out. She figured it out. I do the DNS and go live. I do it. I told you to cowboy code that thing and just FTP it at 6 o'clock. Apparently, she did that, but it was at 10 (laughs) o'clock. All right. Well, we're at the end of episode execute order 66. This is not episode 69, unfortunately. It will be December 8th. This is the IT and the D show. Thanks for listening. We'll see you uh, next week. Should we close out with the draft version of... Yes, we should. What? Yes. A special treat. Wait, who's singing? No, hold on. A special treat. Yeah, yeah, hit it. We'll see you next week. This is the IT and the D Show. See you. IT and the D presents Real Detroit Heroes. Real Detroit Heroes. Today we salute you, Detroit hipster community. Detroit hipster community. You test the limits of fashion sense in bars across the area. Got my sister's jeans on. With your Polaroid camera sitting on the table between a round of PBR tall boys, you want to make sure everyone knows exactly how cool you are, even when it's 100 degrees outside. I just bought a wool hat. Because you're the smartest people in the room, which is clear from the gigantic, ironic eyeglasses you're all wearing. I don't even need these. And just to make sure that everyone notices you, you gather with hundreds of other hipsters, riding your bicycles through downtown Detroit every Monday night, bringing traffic to a grinding halt as you ignore red lights and force cars to come to a screeching halt, all for a selfie. So So here's to you, Detroit hipster community. Thanks for causing the price of PBR to double in the past year. And for giving us the chance to make sure our brakes work each and every week. Real Detroit Heroes. The emergency destruct system is now activated. Look out, Flash! Flash, don't move! Stay where you are! Long live Flash! You've saved your ass! Have a nice day. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Nice shooting, son. What's your name? Murphy. Make the run. The run. The run. Game over, man. It's game over. It's over, Johnny. It's over. Nothing is over! Nothing! You just don't turn it off! Yo! Hold up! Time out! Time out! Y'all take a chill! You need to cool that shit out! And that's the double truth, Ruth! I hope this was as much fun for you as it was for me. How much scotch did you drink that night, by the way? <laughs> Half a bottle. Okay, then shut the hell up. <laughs> You're in your underwear? I'm in my underwear. Hey, let's hang out. No, I'm sorry, honey. I have a headache. I <laughs> definitely want to see Bob in his underwear. That's a fact. Bear me. Show no. <laughs> Why would, like, Buick put their cars next to, like, the Bentleys? Like, why? That's not marketing. Um, the alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> It's, no. You have no scraper? No. How long have you lived in Michigan? All my life. <laughs> you, sir, are an idiot. I don't care. <laughs> when are we going to talk about me? Jane, you ignorant slut. This is the native man. Yes, Captain so, Soundboard doesn't know how to run the soundboard. Cap- Shut up. Stop talking. <laughs> so white right now. I, I'm the whitest guy in the room. Just explain it to me. <laughs> I love this city. I was banging oh, on the way. Wrong. Really? Should we talk about this? Tag team. Should I keep going or should I stop? Hell yeah. Can I just say, it's been great being on a show that talks about Mickey Rooney dying for 20 seconds and then poop for 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You're not very informative, but why are you entertaining?